It is day number two here at Remington Park for the second mile of the season. It's round number six of Progressive American Flat Track. First thing coming onto the racetrack will be our Mission Super Twins practice. They will get two rounds of practice just like yesterday. There'll be five laps a piece. So when they come to the racetrack, it'll be the first practice session. They spent most of the evening last night working on the racetrack. They're even working on it this morning when I got here, and it should be a little bit different racing service. A lot different, I should say, on the front straightaway. A little bit different in the corners as well. Super Twin storylines. Who are we going to be watching for? Brandon Robinson. He is determined. He was on fire uh, a couple weeks ago at Joliet. Came up a little bit short after the incident. He's got an injured right leg. He was bound and determined to win. Also, Jared Meese, his OKC mile win streak ended last night with a third place finish. And Briar Bauman, Mr. Consistency, and consistency is key. He is our points leader coming into round number six here at the OKC mile. They're staging up outside turn number one and turn number two. If you weren't with us yesterday, that is where they enter and exit the racetrack. When they come to the racetrack, it is Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycles. Bikes are rolling on the track right now as we speak. They will come out according to their point standings. The number one bike is Briar Bauman, 44, last night's winner, Brandon Robinson. Nine, the jammer, Jared Meese. The 20 bike, Jared Vandekoy, 95, J.D. Beach. 37 is Bronson Bauman. He's on the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City entry. The 36, Colby Carlisle. 92 is Brandon Price. Got a fifth place finish last night. 67, Davis Fisher. 27, Bugs Pearson. 43 is James the Rocker Spoli. And there is a scratch in the field. The four bike, Brian Smith, is all done. He said his wrist was bothering him yesterday. They have packed up their stuff. And we're not sure if Smith has left the building or not, but the team is already loaded up. Bikes on the track here at the OKC mile number two. Brandon Robinson, last night's winner right here. Looks so smooth yesterday. It was on fire. Look at there's actually a hard surface now real right there on the, at the bottom of the racetrack. It was taking rubber last night. Robinson right there on the four bike. They're chasing the one bike. Let's fade back just a little bit. Take a look at the number nine, the jammer, Jared Meese. He's a little bit easier to spot out there than the other Indian riders. He's got some bright yellow and maybe some fluorescent colors up there on his handlebars, up on the top part of his leather. So he's a little bit easier to find for me up here in the booth. That's the number nine, the jammer, Jared Meese. He had won the three previous Oklahoma City miles leading into yesterday. Came up just a little bit short, settled for third. Can he get back on top of the box here at OKC? We'll find out later on this evening. This is just practice. No surprise, Brandon Robinson to the top spot. 39.556. Wow. Nope, that's actually last night's. <laughs> that's my fault. That's last night's main event finish order right here on my screen. So take a look at J.D. Beach. 95 struggled a little bit last night. And Vandekoy, the 20 bike, he had two second place finishes coming into last night. Finished up in the fourth position. Van Coy's got some red tape on the top of his helmet trying to protect his paint job. A lot of the riders will do that here this weekend and again next weekend as they head off to Lima, the Ohio National, next Saturday night. Van Coy really slid it deep into turn number one right there. Turn one looks a lot better today. So does the front straightaway, actually. So we'll see how it unfolds the rest of the evening. This is the first time out for any of the motorcycles. There's a little bump coming off of turn number two. No harm, no foul. They keep the throttle twist as they go down the back chute, slide it sideways into turn number three. Still watching the 20 by Captain Chaos from Mount Gilead, Ohio. Leaving that throttle pin as much as he can. There's Colby Carlisle. Shout out to Colby Carlisle. Had an excellent run last night. Had a good battle actually with Bronson Bauman. Finished up in the sixth position last night. Bronson. Uh, had a, had a seventh place finish. White flag is out right now. Again, Carlisle, a sixth place finish. He has one fifth place finish earlier in the year and two sixth place finishes. So Carlisle's uh, probably having his best career year in our Mission Super Twins class. He's chasing the 37 of Bronson Bauman. You can see the roost on the front number plate, the, uh, the dirt coming off the 37 bike. We'll talk about it a little bit more later on when Brad gets up here. But when you're behind somebody, all that roost is just slowing you down, actually. You have, we'll have a couple of shots of that later on to uh, show you folks at home as well as the folks that are here watching on the great big screen here at the finish line. Bronson slips a little bit wide. Here comes Carlisle as they race to the checkered flag here in practice. Number one, Jared Meese at the top spot, 39.360. That is faster than any lap of the main event last night. So the track definitely faster right now. Probably smoother than it will be a little bit later on as well. So it looks like, looks like actually three bikes are in the 39 second range. Meese at the top spot. 
here in this practice group. It's Jared Meese, the quickest in practice. There will be two rounds of practice. Meese with a 39.360. Brandon Robinson, last night's winner, is second. Brandon Price, the only other rider in the 39 second range with a 39.819. Davis Fisher, fourth quick, and Jared Vanquay is your top five. That was your Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycle, their first round of practice. They will get two rounds of practice just like they did yesterday. The other two classes will only get one round of practice and two rounds of qualifying. Up next will be the AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines. Last night's winner and our points leader will lead everybody out. That's the 65 of Corey Texter. He is the man in control of this class right now. 65, Corey Texter on the G&G &G Yamaha. 62, Dan Bromley has moved up to second place in the point standings after last night, finished third on his Yamaha. Dalton Gauthier is on the 79 XG 750 Harley-Davidson. Chad Coast is on a borrowed motorcycle from Latest Motorsports. Latest Motors helping out the 49 Chad Coast who broke a crankshaft last night. 25, Ben Lau. 68, Ryan Varnes has the worst luck so far of the 2021 season. 44, Cameron Smith got on the podium for the first time ever last night. The 44 finished up with a second place finish. Danny Eslick, the Tulsa, Oklahoma riders out there on the McGrain Racing Kawasaki, number 64. 42, Jeremiah Duffy sat on the pole, had quick time yesterday. 31 is Dylan Bell. 71, Pat Buchanan. 50, Jimmy McAllister. 161, the Cisco Kid, Casey Cisco. 223, Jeffrey Lowry. 276, Brian LaFelt, 15, Gary Ketchum, also from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the 90, I think we added a bike. That's Brandon Newman. He's out there on a Kawasaki 650. So I don't believe he was in the Twins class yesterday, the production Twins class. So we picked up one rider in this class, 13 bikes. Actually make that 17 bikes are in the uh, production Twins class. 16 of them will make the main event. Keeping our eyes on the 65. The folks in the truck love the look of this motorcycle. Last night, it was the only bike in this particular class that was spotless when it came off of the off the racetrack. The beautiful red, white, and blue paint job. There's a sneak and a peek back to the tallest rider in this class, Dan the Man, Dan Bromley. Got his career best finish in the career class at fourth a few years ago. He also won here on the single and gave his fiance her very first ever victory lap. That's Dan Bromley, feels right at home. He really likes this racetrack, and it definitely showed in the main event. He struggled early on yesterday, and then picked up the pace when it was time to get that paycheck in the main. 62, Dan Bromley, Memphis Shades, Yamaha, Vincent Construction also on board. Quick time so far is the 25, Ben Lau, the Holly Hot Rod. He was one of our storylines we were watching yesterday, was not a factor yesterday, but he made his way towards uh, the front right now. So far, Ben Lau with the 4-1.352. Corey Texter, who's leading every lap, was in second. There's the 42, Jeremiah Duffy had quick time yesterday, currently back here in the seventh spot with the 4-1.875. So he was quick yesterday, not showing so far here today. Jeremiah Duffy on the 42. There's Cam Smith, the 44, on that Yamaha. There's another rider that wasn't here with us yesterday in this class, the 90 bike, Brandon Newman. Right in front of him is 161, Casey Sisko. Chad Coase goes to the top spot. His last lap is fastest one, 40.757 on what we were told is a borrowed motorcycle from Latus. Latus Motorsports fields the bike, the 43 bike for James the Rocket Rispoli in the Premier class. Latus Motors racing Harley Davidson. Looking for Chad. There he goes across the start finish line right here. So he's near the back of the pack. He's up in the deep stuff, letting that thing eat. Look at him. Twisting the throttle. Loving the high line. Last time by was a 40.878. Chad is the only one in the 42nd range right now, 40.757. Corey Texter coasting across the finish line. Corey coasting across the finish line right now. Our points leader. This is not what he wanted for sure. Corey is coasting across the finish line right about now. He's looking at the big screen. Watch what the competition is doing. Coming into today's race, he has three wins on the season. He has 105 points. That is a huge margin back to 78 points, Dan Bromley. So not sure exactly what happened to Corey. Doesn't seem like he's too worried about it. He's still sitting on the bike, kind of watching. No, he doesn't seem worried about it at all. He's just watching the screen. Maybe he's just uh, gonna take it. Actually, it looks like the bike's still running. He's still twisting his right throttle. So uh, maybe he just didn't like it out there. Yeah, maybe just want to save it for later on. Yeah, 
It's a little bit warmer than it is back in Pennsylvania. Corey Dexter currently fifth right now, 4-1.391. Chad Coast is in the top spot. Here comes the 64 of Eslick. He's also coasting to the finish line area. What is going on? We saw a few bikes having troubles last night as well. Slick goes on by. Uh, Jeffrey Lowry's sitting here waiting to go to the pit area as well. So here in P1, 90 bike. Brandon Newman, again, he didn't race last night. Jeffrey Lowry's pushing his bike across. 15, Ketchum just now coming across, taking that checkered flag. Yeah, Corey seems just fine. The bike's still running. So Chad Coe's quickest here in practice, 4-0.757 for Corey Texter. Dalton Gauthier, second, another PA rider. Ben Lau, the Holly Hot Rod right there crossing the finish line on that 25 bike. Currently your third fastest here in practice, 4-1.352. Ryan Varnes is third. Corey Texter only made a couple of laps. Uh, still fifth quick. Cameron Smith is sixth. Dan Bromley seventh. Jeremiah Duffy, who was our qu quick time last night, is eighth. Dylan Bell, Pat Buchanan rounds out your top ten. Eslick is 11th, and he was coasting across the finish line either, also and going back to the pit area. So lots of stuff happening out here in our practice session. That was your AMT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines. Up next will be the biggest class of the day. It's your AMT Singles class. They're going to put a little bit of water on the racetrack before we bring the singles onto the racetrack. There's some of the times right here for the production twins. If you're here last night, you got to see Corey Texter walk away with another victory, his third of the season last night. Corey Texter was your winner in the production twins class. Cameron Smith with his first ever podium with American Flat Track. And Dan Brownlee made it a Pennsylvania sweep and also a Yamaha sweep of this class last night. It's good racing in this class. And Jeremiah Duffy, we expected him to be on the podium. He just uh, struggled a little bit. That main event ended up in the fourth spot. Dalton Gauthier was fifth last night. Ben Lau, sixth. Pat Buchanan, seventh. Slick was eighth last night. Dylan Bell, ninth. Kevin Stallings was tenth. Casey Sisko was eleventh. And twelfth was Ryan Barnes. Jeffrey Lowry was thirteenth. And Jeffrey Lowry just pushed his motorcycle back to the pit area. So that's how they finished up last night. Night number one here at the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City. OKC Mile presented by Kicker Performance Audio. If you're here with us, underneath the grandstands is where the souvenir uh, tent is. American Flat Tracker Clothing Company is set up downstairs in the air conditioning. Stop by and check them out. Also right next to them is our friends with the Rookie Class of 79. They've got a really cool uh, uh, poster that's being uh, raffled off today. It's also got a signed pit jersey from the three factory Indian riders from a couple years ago. Meese is the poster. It has been signed right next to them is Law Tigers and Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City. All that is inside. Out front here, down towards turn number one, you can see our friends with Kicker Performance Audio. Kicker, living loud from up here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. This is their home race. We're glad to have Kicker Performance Audio on board for the 2021 season. Getting a question actually from the production truck for me up here in the booth. And the question is, how much does the track change? Like, can you use your notes from yesterday as you come into today? That's a, a very good question. They did change the track an awful lot. I think you, you will start with maybe the same setup as yesterday. Uh, track looks like it's a little bit faster right now. It's a little bit smoother. So you may make a few minor adjustments. But I think coming onto the racetrack for the first time today, you would leave your adjustments where you finished up yesterday or possibly go back to what you started with yesterday, depending on how you liked the way your bike was running and handling. Uh, definitely looks a lot smoother today, so you might make a few adjustments to your suspension. Uh, if you want to make the bike turn turn a little bit different, you might adjust the wheelbase by stretching out the, re you know, the rear wheel, pulling it back or pulling it in. Uh, you can do several little adjustments, and maybe you, you, you sat back, you watched and learned from last night, You'll come back with a, 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 a completely different setup for tonight, depending on how you did. Now, look at that. That great big bag of mission chips right there. And then behind that, they have the Kicker Performance Audio booth set up. You got the American Flat Tracker there. Man, that's a cool shot. You can see up there behind the trees is the pit area. If you're here with us for the first time, the pits are actually located outside of Terminal 1, up a hill. We'll have an open pit area, the rider autograph session. Right now, it's a little bit different than yesterday. The rider autograph session today is 7.30 until 8.30, so it's going to go a little bit longer. Uh, but we're going to do that so we can let the sun set. We can work on the racetrack before we get into the racing action. So opening ceremonies today at 6.20. 
and we'll finish those up at 6.30, get into our semifinals. So all of the racing action today will be after opening ceremonies. And then again, we'll take a break after all of our semifinals are done before the Mission Challenge and before all three of our main events. So we switched it up a little bit. We had to allow for the uh, break for the sun to set. It was, they said it was really blinding to the riders coming through turn number three and into turn number four. Uh, so we did uh, make some adjustments to the schedule. We hope everybody understands that things change and we have to roll with the punches sometimes, just like we did yesterday. Max Whale, he's keeping his helmet on. Maybe it's because he doesn't want to see if, uh, show us his mustache or maybe he shaved it off. So Max Whale sitting in there getting ready to come out. Water truck has pulled off. They're firing up the engines outside turn number one. AFT singles coming up next. This is their first round of practice. Their only round of practice. Number one is Dallas Daniels. 15 is Mikey Rush. 18, Max Well. 52, Shana Texter Bauman. 13, Morgan Mishler. 17, last night's winner, Henry Wiles. 105 is the broiler, Brandon Kitchen. 48 is Trent Lowe. 21, Trevor Bruner had a wild get off last night. He has been cleared by the medical staff. He's just now rolling onto the track at the back of the pack. 51, Cole Zabala, and the 38 is the Dean machine, Tanner Dean. At the back of the pack is the 21, Trevor Bruner. We'll be keeping an eye on him as well because he is the one that had the wild get off in turn number four last night. Made the trip to the hospital, was released by the doctor. He is way at the back of the pack. I like that. I like he's going out there. Doesn't want to mix it up with anybody. Wants to see how he's feeling. Looks smooth as can be right now. Let's take a look back at the replay from last night. Uh, a, a few of us got to see it several times. You folks at home probably know got to see it one or two times because it was wild. We want to make sure that Trevor was all right. Let's see if we can take a look. Here's the replay from last night. So he was in the lead. This is turn number four. Got up over the wind roll in the middle and then hit a pile of dirt and goes up and over. The bike tumbles. Man, and the, the side, he was a full, a full lock sliding the wrong direction, and then to hit that pile of dirt up and over back onto the racetrack at about 100 miles per hour, and then kissing the dirt. So good that he is up and on the racetrack. Talking to him earlier, he seems just fine. He, he remembered every bit of what happened, so uh, he was cleared. He passed the uh, concussion protocol. He is out here on the racetrack. Dallas Daniels hit the top spot so far, just one lap in. Dallas Daniels on the one by 15 is Mikey Rush ended his podium streak last night. He had been on the podium every race of the season and he finished up just a little bit short back there in the fourth position last night. So he'll try to get back on the podium, get another streak going. Mikey Rush was fourth last evening. Henry Wiles was the uh, Big winner last night. Brandon Kitchen goes to the top spot, the 105. It's the BK Broiler goes to fast time here in practice, 4-1.992. Track is a lot smoother than it was yesterday. They took a lot more of the loose horse racing track dirt off of it and pushed it out on the outside edges of the racetrack. You can see, actually, if you're here with us, you can see at the finish line, they've actually cut it down you can see how deep it is sitting beside the, our, our, our flag and stuff like that inside of the finish line area. You can see it's, it's about a foot deep. We've dug off a foot of loose dirt. Now we're down to the hard packed base of the uh, racetrack out here at Remington Park. Daniels brings him off of turn number four. Big P is our flagman. His real name's Patrick. I just found that out like the other day, but his real name is Patrick. So we take a look back at Henry Wiles. Quick time, 41.937. Last time by for Henry Wiles. He was last night's winner. His teammate, Trevor Bruner, now up to second, 41.983. After taking the wild ride last night, Bruner hasn't missed a beat. 41.983 for Bruner, who's at the back of the pack. Wiles trying to catch a sniff of the draft from the 52. Shayna Texter Balvin. Unbelievable. The 21, like it didn't even happen. Up to second place here in practice. 41.983, just barely off of Henry Wiles. 41.937 as the checkered flag is out for one. Dallas Daniels, here comes Wiles getting the draft pass. That might actually help his lap time when you get up and you can suck the draft of the rider in front of you and then swing on by. Look at that. Bruner gets by at least one rider and closes up on Trent Lowe right there taking the checkered flag. Henry Wiles at the top spot. Tre Trevor Brenner is second. All right, we're going to take a look. We just heard something falls off of the 17 motorcycle. 
Here it comes right about there. It does definitely looks like a transponder. Wow, look at that thing bouncing. So they are allowed to do a practice start on the back straightaway. That's what they were told in the riders' meeting. That way they don't tear up the front straightaway, so they get one practice start. There is the, the 21 bike. Doesn't look like he's missed a beat. Now look at him. He's already tucked in and drafting as he's still shifting through the gearbox. There's the transponder. It's right there on the groove right now on the back straightaway. Hopefully they'll get that picked up. I don't know if Steve Moorhead knows about it, but they'll figure that out. If they're listening to me up here in the booth anyway. <laughs> Henry Wiles, quick time, 41.937. Trevor Bruner is second, 41.983. Brandon Kitchen is third, 41.990. Everybody else is 42 or higher. Look at this, Mishler back in 11th with a 43.433, way off the leader's time. Mishler got onto the podium last night. Now he's 11th out of 11 that have been on the racetrack so far here in our AFT singles class. Group number two set to come out. There's the transponder still sitting on the groove. Hopefully they're going to get that taken care of. Group number two sitting on standby. They're sending the bikes out. Group number two, 99, Kevin Stallings. The 19 is James Ott. 143, Cody Kopp. 94 is Ryan Wells. 26, Aiden Roos. 7, Z11 is Andrew Luker. 124, Hunter Bauer from Canada. 161, Casey Sisko. 55, Tyler Raggio. And the 191 made his first ever main event in his debut with us last night. That's Dustin Brown, also from Canada. Two Canadians out there, 124 and 191, if you're keeping track uh, with our friends from up north. Very impressive. Uh, Dustin Brown was one of my most impressive moments of yesterday. You know, for one, missed, a, missed a, a rear tire of the guy in front of him yesterday coming off the turn before, and then, you know, running out front of his, of his practice group every session and then making the main event in his first maiden voyage, his first time ever on a mile. The 191 had a heck of a day yesterday. We'll see if he can even better that here today. We're looking at the riders out in front. 19, James Ott from Simi Valley, California. Right behind him is the 143. That's Cody Kopp. We'll take a look through the field. There's the 11 of Luker. Uh, looks like one of our riders has stopped on the inside of the racetrack. And looking down, that looked like it might be the 26 of eight in Roos Sevens. Looks like it has 21 on his leg right there, but I believe that is eight in Roos Sevens with the 26 that's having an issue with the motorcycle. He's just going to lay it down, I think. They're going to keep going. He's on the very inside of the racetrack. They're going to keep going. The riders are a lot higher than that in that particular corner. This is practice for our AFT singles. It's group number two. There are three groups of riders out here in the AFT singles class. There's a big freight train down the back straightaway. Kevin Stallings reaches off, grabs a tear off, and lets it fly behind him. Stallings on the 99, was doing double duty yesterday. See if he'll do that again today. Here comes Ott with the 143 chasing him down. Cody Cop 124. Hunter Bauer up to fourth position on in practice. 124 is on the move. That's the NKR Canada team who is teamed up with the Waters Auto Body team, and he's up there in the deep stuff. Hunter Bauer, they call him Showtime. There goes the 243 of Cody Cop finally getting by the 19 bike of James Ott. These are three up-and-comers right here going down the back chute. Look at them switch lines off of turn number two. Down the back chute, 124 Bauer goes by Cop and goes by the 19 of Ott. This might help him have a quick lap. If he caught the draft down the back straightaway to help push him into turn number three, this could be a very quick lap for the 124 Hunter Bauer. I know it's only practice, but you want to do good in practice to give you the confidence to go out there and do it again in qualifying and know that you're set up right. There's the white flag for Bauer and the 143 of Hot Rod Cody Cop. Cop sneaks a peek up the inside. Actually didn't help either one of their times this last time by, but Bauer up there in the fourth position. It's still Henry Wiles with the quick time so far in practice. That is the 17 bike. Last night's winner for 1.937. And again, hats off for sure for Trevor Bruner. Just barely off the quick time so far in practice. After the wild ride last night, the free ride to the ambulance. I'm a free ride to the hospital. I'm not going to say it's free. He got a he got an air conditioned ride to the ambulance uh, to the hospital. But man, act like nothing even phasing this kid. 41.983 for Bruner. Checkered flag is out for 143 and 124 across the finish line at the same time. Wilds with Bruner Kitchen. 
Hunter Bauer gets that uh, fourth position here in practice. Dallas Daniels, Max Whale. Cody Kopp, the 143, didn't see, see where he's at. He is back in 10th here in this practice session, 42.867, as the checks are out. One more group to go here in our practice session. Only one round for the production twins and our AFT singles riders. The Super Twins will get two rounds of practice here today, and everybody gets two rounds of qualifying. The way you qualify is very important. That will put you in your starting spot into your semifinal. While still in the top spot, one more group to go for 1.937. There is a bike out there on the racetrack. It was the 26 of eight in Rue Sevens. He's getting a push back. Actually, he's on the front straightaway now. And there's also, yeah, there's Rue Sevens. So there's, looks like we have two bikes out there stalled on the racetrack. So it'll take us just a minute. Actually, Rue Sevens looks like he might be injured. He's limping a little bit. I, a lot of the flat trackers walk like that. Well, you do have a steel shoe on your left boot, and that kind of makes it heavier than your right boot. I'm just saying. Some of us limp a little bit, though, because we're getting older. Well, that exhaust is way, that's Dustin Brown. The exhaust has definitely came out of the head, uh, the front, you know, uh, the cylinder head and sticking way out. So Dustin Brown getting a push back here on the front straightaway. Aiden Rue Sevens is being walked back over here. It looks like, uh, looks like Dave Waters grabbed a hold of the motorcycle. Not sure he's carrying all the rest of the stuff, but Rue Sevens limping a little bit. Hopefully he didn't uh, do anything too serious. They had mechanical issues yesterday. I saw one of those uh, KTMs was blown up. Big crack in the cylinder head all the way down to the cases. Tough break for Dustin Brown, getting a push back to the pit area. So as soon as we get the track cleared off, we'll get back into group number three, the final group of practice. Oh, somebody finally, somebody, somebody listened to me. They stopped by and got that transponder off the back straightaway. Look at that. Group three, 175, Terrence Santero, 135, Ezra Brusky, 298, Trent Pickle, 243 is the Jet, Jared Lowe, 109, Billy Ross, 156, Jordan Jean, 101, Grant Holmes on the Suzuki, 121, Jacob Cassio, he is on a borrowed motorcycle from Raggio Racing, so uh, they, they gave me a shout out uh, on Instagram, said, hey, be sure and let us know that, let everybody know that they're on the Raggio Racing bike, Cassio on the 121, David Wigan from Tulsa, Oklahoma, 133, and Travis Petten on the 182 bike, those are the riders moving on to the racetrack. It is group number three, first and only round of practice. Look at them all come out there like a mad dash. Some of these riders don't have any points just yet here in the 2021 season. Doesn't mean that they're slow, just maybe means that they haven't made a main event. The only way to get points and money in American Flat Track is to finish and qualify into a main event. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on this rider right here, though. The 175 was in the amateur ranks last year, just moved up to the pro ranks here in American Flat Track. Gave Cody Kopp a run for his money for the uh, AMA Hori Nikki Hayden Horizon Award in Flat Track last year at the Flat Track Grand Championships. And those are coming up. If you're going to DuCoin, Illinois, our AFT race there is July 17th. There are amateur races a few days before and a few days after. It's a, about a, an eight day stretch of motorcycle racing all in DuCoin, Illinois. But the next round next weekend is the Ohio National, Lima, Ohio. That is Jared and Nicole Meese's race. They're the promoters. They're also bringing back the uh, George, George Rotor Memorial Dash for Cash back there next week. Riders on the back straight. It looks like the 135 is in tow behind the 175. Santero on the 175. Brusky on the 135 from Milwaukee. Look at that helmet all taped up trying to protect the paint job. I believe that's the 133 David Wigan from Tulsa, Oklahoma. There's Jordan Jean, 156 from Michigan. Three folks have never been to a flat track race. They try to tuck in and get as small as they can to break, as, to break through the wind as quickly and as easily as possible. That's why they try to get as small as possible. Brad Baker likes to say they try to get under the paint on these singles. They try to get under the plastic. A lot of my family and friends are here. I see my aunt down there in the front straightaway. Good to see uh, my whole family. I love being in my Oklahoma City race. The OKC mile. Looks like the 175 slips up the racetrack just a little bit. Here comes Grant Holmes on the 101 Suzuki trying to go up the inside of Santero. A couple of California or West Coast guys right here. Here they come towards the finish line area. 
is the last group of our first round of practice. 175, Terrence Santero from Petaluma, California. 101, that's Grant Holmes from Springfield, California on his Suzuki. Only two Suzukis in this class, and I believe only one Kawasaki in the singles class. Honda has been the bike of choice, and now we've got KTMs out there uh, battling with them with Shayna Dexter Bauman on the factory uh, KTM with Maxwell as her teammate. These two put a good, good little battle on here for practice. His pipe's hanging out of the header too as well. The 101, look, he's gonna run over his pipe as well. He's gotta be able to hear it. Watch out, that pipe's coming down. He definitely feel, it's definitely slowing the motorcycle down, but that pipe is sticking way out the side, just like the 191 of Dustin Brown, that last group. I wonder why we're having such a problem with the header pipes. Look, that thing's hanging way back. Man, you just want to go out there and get a quick lap in, but it's only practice. I would pull it off. Shut her down. 101, Grant Holmes, one of our rookie riders out here. Yep, well, the white flag's already been displayed. Checkered flag coming out right here, but, man, I think that they would, uh, I think the rider should know if, he, if the motorcycle's not sounded right just to go ahead and park it, but uh, he's trying to finish it up. The checkered flag is out. He's still gonna have to go a whole mile around. Now I think he realizes, he just looked down, he sees it now, so the pipe, oh man, hang on to his hand, both hands, buddy. Woo, man, that pipe is trash, hopefully. And I don't know if anybody ever brings a spare pipe when you come to a, a motorcycle race. He might have to, okay, now he's working on grooming the track for us over there on the high side, turn one and two. I think I'll just stop it right there. Just shut it down. We'll, we'll give you a ride back. <laughs> man. He's turning it back around. That's going to be frowned upon, too. I'm not going to say that. Did I say that out loud? Did I say that out loud? Man. He's, now he's holding the pipe up with his boot. What? <laughs> yeah, going the wrong direction. That's all right. He's taking it back. I don't know if they can salvage any of that, but that is it for practice out here today. All four classes, I'm sorry, all three classes have been on the racetrack. Super Twins, Production Twins, Singles. We're going to do some track maintenance mission. Super Twins, second round of practice will be the next on the racetrack. Again, if you're here, stop by and check out the uh, what's going on underneath the grandstands. Rookie class of 79 down there. There's your uh, practice official, unofficial results of practice. Wiles quick is 41.937. Trevor Bruner, second quick, 41.983. Taking a look on back, looking for your favorite rider. Brusky was out there. The 135 gets all the way up to 14th in that last group. 1.2 seconds off of the leader's time. Also, Dustin Brown slides back to 15th. Grant Holmes was quick before that pipe came off. 101 is up there in the 18th spot. Sliding some fast guys down, including Ryan Wells, Andrew Luker, Raggio back there in 23rd. David Wig and the Tulsa Oklahoma Riders in 24th. That's it for practice out here today. Keep everybody hydrated. Please drink plenty of fluids. We'll have open paddock coming up later on this evening. Opening ceremonies at 620. We'll be back with qualifying real soon. Is that your stomach growling or the sound of thousands of cc's circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people who do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. A race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. Arai Helmet started racing in America and flat track, and we've been supporting it ever since. Arai, handcrafted with an obsessive dedication to rider protection. For more information, please visit our website, ariamericas.com.
Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of Progressive American Flat Track. For decades, Progressive American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic Gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing championship since 1989. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street-legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat track tire. With the K180, street riders can now have the authentic flat track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Tired of replacing your battery every year? It's time to buy the world's best lithium battery, the Pulse IPT. With up to 1,200 cranking amps and unmatched reliability, there's no better battery for your bike. Visit Full Spectrum Power in the paddock today or on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Start something. Power everything. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at klotzlube.com. Born from the desire to inspire and create adventure and community, Super 73 is an electric bike brand fusing motorcycle heritage and youth culture. Founded in 2016 and based in Southern California, Super 73 has led the charge in pioneering a new approach to help redefine the electric bicycle industry. By emphasizing thoughtful design, responsible manufacturing techniques, and local community engagement, the brand continually strives to grow and expand into a true industry industry leader visit super73.com for more information race fans vp racing fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels lubricants coolants and appearance products for track and street from pro racers to weekend warriors we help riders make more power ask your local power sports dealer Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. At Tech Mounts, we support motorcycle riders, industry retailers, and OEMs for over 20 years. Proudly designed and manufactured in the USA, Tech Mounts has become the number one source for mounting any mobile device on any vehicle and comes with a lifetime guarantee. See all Tech Mounts products at your local motorcycle dealers, retailers, and on techmounts.com. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best in class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you too can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. With over 300 world championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. First race of the uh, day coming up in just a little bit, right after opening ceremonies. Actually, we've changed the schedule up. Well, I just got a report from uh, Carter, who's uh, up at High Point, says some of the best racing is going on right now. 450 Moto number two is happening right now for you folks at home. We're going to take a quick break in the action out here when we come back to the track at 3.55 p.m. Central. Mission Super Twins practice number two, followed by our qualifying action for all of the other classes. We're going to take a break in the action. While we do, we're going to show the AFT singles race from Joliet just two weeks ago. This is the American Flat Track Singles main event. There's Maxwell. You saw him taking the win in semi number two. Mikey Rush right alongside. Boy, he thought he had a shot in Atlanta, didn't he? 
Yeah, he sure did. Mikey Rush has been Mr. Consistent so far this year, been on the podium in all three races before this, but hasn't got that top spot. Maybe it'll come here tonight. As you look at that starting lineup, you got to talk about Dallas Daniels. He was the guy in Atlanta taking two main events. Yeah, he sure was, man. He was dominant. That was great to see him bring home two main event wins that night. Good crowd on hand, as you can see in the grandstands. Here's our race facts. We're going to run for eight minutes plus two laps. 17 riders in the field. And Shayna Texter's got our KTM on board as we get ready for the start. Here we go. Man, that's a cool angle. You can just see how close these guys are off the start. Look at how chaotic this is. Crazy just trying to find the line. We talked about the bar banging here. Cole Zabala on the outside of Shayna on that 51 as these guys try to settle it down. Yeah, it looks like Mikey Rush is going to lead lap one with Morgan Mishler in tow. Mishler, Bruner, and Max Whale right there. Yeah, Mishler taking a little bit wider approach than anybody, trying to get up on the banking, carry as much momentum as he can. This is an extremely wide racetrack, Brad. You got a lot of room to play with here. Yeah, you really do. And there's definitely been some new lines that have came into play here tonight with the moisture that's coming up as the sun went down. You can see three, four good lines of opportunity here to spread out and pick your way around this big half mile. Yeah, there's a lot of lines to choose from, but it's all pretty slick out there right now. The riders say that you really got to ride with finesse tonight. Got to keep your wheels in line. You don't want to get too sideways because when you're sideways, that's when you're scrubbing off speed. So these guys are trying to carry as much momentum as they possibly can. Brad, it looks to me like Max Wales trying to make some ground on that bottom line there as we see Dallas Daniels right there in all blue on that Yamaha. He's a little deeper in the pack trying to get up to the front, but look at Whale back there in third using that bottom lane. Yeah, he's definitely cutting off some uh, real estate there, a little bit shorter way around the racetrack. The guys up top, they got to go in that much harder if they're going to go the longer way around the racetrack where Whale is just cutting off a lot of time, where you see there how he's able to come in. Man, they're three wide coming off of turn four. And right in the middle of it is Mikey Rush on the 15. Is he going to be able to get the lead? No, he's actually going to slide wide and three and four, and Whale's going to come up alongside. Yeah, Max Whale, I'm super impressed with him right now being able to take that lower line, but still able to get it turned and not quite get the bike sideways, getting a really good drive off the corner, too. And you can see how he's able to go a little deeper into the corner there. That could be an advantage here as we get back to one. Yeah, but Morgan Mish, they're doing a great job. Well, let's go back to seeing these guys come three wide off of turn four. Man, this is racing at its finest right here. And you can see those rear ends of the motorcycles just fighting as hard as they can to get every little bit of traction to try to propel their rider to the front, which right now is the number 13 of Morgan Mishler. Yeah, Morgan's still taking that wider line coming into the corner, just uh, carrying as much momentum as he possibly can, but seems like he's slipping up maybe a little bit coming off the corner where Max Whale and Mikey Rush are getting a pretty good drive. Oh, look at this battle for a second here, Brad. Max Whale and Mikey Rush having at it, and it looks like Whale has decided to slip back to third for now. Yeah, there's a lot of racing left here. These guys are maybe just sizing themselves up a little bit, seeing where their strengths are, seeing where their weaknesses are. But, you know, deep down, they're, they're all going for it at the same time. Now Whale moves up a little bit. He's going to go to the outside of Rush. Rush still looking to get to the inside of our race leader, Mishler. Yeah, and look at now look at Wales all the way to the bottom. He's going to take over second. Wow, that was the lowest that he's gone this whole time, but he made it work, was able to take over second. He's able to hold on to it. Yeah, he does, going into turn three. Meanwhile, great racing action in the box on the right side of your screen, a little bit deeper in the field. Henry Wilds involved in that action. Let's see if Max is able to take over the lead here. Man, they're side by side. Uh, looks like Morgan's going to have the momentum and gets a drive around the outside still. It's hold on to the lead here's whale looking on the bottom again we saw how far down he had to go to get second you think he'll do that again to take the lead I, I think he will i think that's his line right now where he's just able to cut off a lot of time going to the bottom there he goes not able to complete the pass just yet can he get the drive off the corner that's a really hard line for Mort michler the dude being able to carry that much more momentum around the outside going the longer way around the racetrack but look how close he got that 
front tire to the backside of our race leader, Mishler, now well all the way down to the white line again and drifts up right alongside of Mishler. Ah, he might have him this time. Mishler slips up a little bit. Why they can't twist that throttle any harder, can they? No, they cannot, but look at them side by side again. This is the best race of the night so far. Maxwell having to use all of that bigger body of his to get that traction to stick in the rear and drive up into the lead, which he has right now. It looks like Maxwell is definitely going to clear the lead this time. Let's see what uh, Morgan Mishler can do. He's going to go to work and see if he can get back by. Oh, he gets a good run on him, but not quite enough. Pair of KTMs battling at the front of the field here in this very exciting AFT singles main event. You can see going into turn one here, Morgan Mischer goes right through a bunch of packing out of another rider's exhaust. Lucky that's all soft and didn't bother him at all going through it. And that packing used to quiet the exhaust, correct, Brad? Yes, sir. Well, we got great racing action going on here with this AFT singles main event. See if this guy, Max Whale, can hang on for the win on that KTM. Welcome back to Joliet, Illinois. Ralph Shaheen, Brad Baker, and Kristen B with you. Watching this thrilling AFT singles main event, Max Whale, the Australian, out front and leading right now with Wisconsin's Morgan Mishler right behind him in second. I had my eye on Mikey Rush back in third. I think he's mimicking the line of Max Whale a little bit, trying to make up time on these guys, and I think he has. He's wheeling back up on them, but we're running out of time. Let's see what he's able to do. Mikey Rush, the rider out of San Jose, California, on the Yamaha, and he's got Dallas Daniels, his teammate, trying to close in as well from fourth. Yeah, Max Whale not taking nearly as low of a line coming into the corner now. He's just running right on the outside of the rubber there. We call that the groove. Uh, that's probably right where there's just a little bit of moisture still left in the racetrack. Doing a really good job of keeping his wheels in line. Is he, not... is he running more of a protective line than Brad? I'd say more is trying to carry his momentum right now. If he was running a protective line, it'd be dropping to the bottom. But I think he knows that he has a couple bike links on these guys right now to where he just has a little bit of breathing room. And you can see Mishler having to move up a little bit further. He's still searching, and he better find it quick because here comes Mikey Rush. Yeah, I think Mikey can smell blood in the water right now, but he only has a couple laps left to make it happen. Rush going down to the bottom. Can he find some of that moisture down there to help propel him into second? Yeah, this is such a great race. Going to come down to the last corner here. One of these riders is going to have to get aggressive, but not too aggressive to make a mistake. If you push this a little too hard, that will actually hurt you more than help you. Wales' only win was at Volusia the season opener in 2020. Can he get his second here tonight? And this would be his first win with his new team. I mean, this would just be a dream come true from this kid from Australia. It's super impressive what he's been able to do in such a short amount of time running the American Flat Track Series. Max sees the signal, one to go. And Rush, back there in third, has been on the podium at every round so far in 2021. Yeah, really the only thing Mishler and Rush can do right now is run it in as hard as they can in turn three out of desperation. Oh, look, a little bit of white smoke coming out of Mishler. This, his mic might let go. Well, Wales going to take the win. Wow. Mishler just brings the smoker home to take second, and Rush is on the podium once again. Man, talk about luck on his side. If that would have happened one lap before, he might not have been able to finish the race. Mishler got absolutely everything out of that KTM there was to get tonight. And he'll be on the podium in second. And Whale gets his second career victory. Yeah, Dallas Daniels and Mikey Rush giving the congratulations. Nothing but sportsmanship between all these riders. Man, that was a great race. Yeah, and you can see the emotion, too, with Max Whale, how excited he is. He's going to the top step of the podium. Mishler and Rush will join him. Daniels finishes fourth. And there's a look. Shayna Texter Bauman back in 10th. And that will be the rest of the field with Henry Wiles in 11th. Let's go to Kristen and our winner.
Earlier in the day, Maxwell telling me that if he won tonight, the stash is staying, it's here to stay. Uh, during that race, Max, there were so many epic passes, but one pass really uh, stuck out to me and stood out to me, and it was your pass for the lead, and you were able to maintain after that. Max, uh, what was it like racing on this track that uh, riders throughout history have just said, this is the funnest track to race on? How fun was it for you? Yeah, that main event was so much fun. I think, you know, I was in fifth at one stage and found myself battling for fourth, third, second. And I found a line early on in the race that was working well. And then as the race got on, I, I noticed, uh, like, uh, I seen a front wheel a couple times on the inside and on the outside. And I, I knew I had to change it up. So I started switching my line up about halfway through. And, yeah, I found it. And it, and it sort of just stayed there, which I'm pumped about. But... I was kind of worried early on, you know, the track, it was like one line and that, but man, it came into a great track and I had so much fun, good battles and yeah. That was some great racing up at Joliet just a couple of weeks ago. Also some great racing was last night in the AFT singles class out here at the OKC Mile. Let's take a look at last night's main of our AFT singles class. It was good for battle for second, third, and fourth after the 17 gets out in front. He said, I will see you guys on top of the box. Henry Wiles was kind of a sleeper coming in, told Kristen Beat that that bike wasn't quite up to snuff. He didn't think he had anything for him, but then he come out here and just put the hurting on him last night. He walked away, and from there on back, it was a great battle. There's Dallas Daniels having his hands full with Mikey Rush. Rush had been on the podium every race so far the 2021 season. He ran second for quite a bit of the race. Here comes Mishler going to the high side, up and off the groove in the deep stuff, which is amazing on a 450 single, just leaving it pinned wide open. But it's the longer way around. The thicker dirt slows the motorcycle down a little bit, but it didn't seem to slow Mishler down at all. You can see how big Wiles' lead was right there, way out in front on the 17. Turner racing American Honda bike, stretching it way out. He's whipping the horse as they come across the finish line. Then one bike finished up right there, second, Dallas Daniels. Morgan Mitchell will take third. Let's hear from our winner. You know, we've been struggling. It's no secret. We thought we'd uh, come out swinging right away from the round one. And he definitely came out swinging last night. His teammate was on fire until he had to get off in the semifinal. It is so good to see Trevor Bruner up here, second fast in practice today. Wouldn't have think he would be out here. So we'll take a couple more commercial breaks when we come back. Hey, Mission Super Twins practice up next. Looking for more power? E3 spark plugs deliver more power, better fuel efficiency, and reduced emissions. The secret is in the patented diamond-shaped ground electrode that promotes a more complete burn of the fuel. Proven on the dyno and on the racetrack, the official spark plug of American Flat Track helps power champions on two wheels and four. Winners run E3. What are you running? Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit sideburnmagazine.com. Hold on to your burritos because things are about to get too fast, too tasty. Mission Foods is a proud sponsor of the AFT Super Twins. Add Mission to your race-watching snacks for mouth-watering race day flavors. Mission Foods. Too fast, too tasty. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at TorchEyewear.com and click on our free Home Try-On program. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high-action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you, too, can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high-performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. 
SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core. From the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in progressive American flat track, SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue-green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and a setting sun, then you owe it to yourself to check out Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we've been making dreams come true for over a decade. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City would like to welcome all race fans to the OKC Mile. If you'd like to see and experience the new 2022 Indian FTRs, they're in stock and ready for a test ride today. Please stop at Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City to see what everybody's talking about. Up next, we will have our Mission Super Twins practice round number two. But first, let's take a look back at the points right now. Briar Baum is still in the lead of the points with one win on the season, a worst finish of fourth, and that was round number one. We have had five races and four different winners. Sitting second in the point standings now is Brandon Robinson. He was fifth yesterday, all the way up to second after his second win of the season last night. Jared Meese finished in the uh, third place last night. He is third on the season with one win at round number two. Jared Vandekoy. Being really consistent, two seconds into fourth in a row coming into this race. He is currently in the fourth position. Vandekoy without a win, but still in fourth. J.D. Beach, the winner of the Atlanta Super TT, is now in the fifth place as the bikes are on the track. It is practice session number two for the Mission Super Twins, presented by SNS Cycles. The number one bike is Briar Bauman, 44, Brandon Robinson, 9, Jared Meese, 20, Ver Jared Vandekoy, 95, J.D. Beach, 37, that's Bronson Bauman, 36, Colby Carlisle, 92, Brandon Price, 67, Davis Fisher, 27 is Robbie Pearson, the 43 is James the Rocker Rispoli. If you weren't here earlier, Brian Smith has scratched from today's event. They said his uh, wrist is not up to par, so he is all done for the weekend here in Oklahoma City. Green flag is waving. It is your Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycle on the racetrack right now. This is their second round of practice. After this, we'll get into qualifying for the other two classes. Briar trying to sneak away from everybody right there. That's a good shot of how small they get going down the back straightaway. They do the same thing on the front straightaway as well. Do not see the 44 bike out there, so I guess he's going to, you know, the practice is optional. Qualifying, I guess, is kind of optional, but uh, I guess he's confident with the win last night on top of the box or on top of the speed chart for practice, and Robinson's not out there right now in this practice session, so that's interesting. Maybe a little strategy. A little bit of hole forming right there, a little few bumps coming off a of turn number two. There's a look at Mies. We'll take a look back at the 92. Brandon Price finished fifth yesterday. Look at the, the waggle on the 43 bike right behind him. Had a little bit of head shake. And that could be a, a little bit of the, the winds actually blowing them down the back straightaway just like they did yesterday. The, they fight the wind on the front straightaway. Look at the style of the 92. This kid, he's got the 92. Reminds me of Rodney Ferris, the 92 out there. He is from Maryland. That's why he picked the 92. Brandon Price. A fifth place finish last night. He is a look, still looking for his first ever American flat track win in the premier class. He gets up in the deep stuff down here in turn number one and two. Still letting the dog eat, twisting that throttle, sliding back on the seat, putting the traction to the rear wheel, going around those bumps off of turn number two. This is where Raspoli had a little bit of head shake, reaches up, grabs a tear off, no harm, no foul. They keep on trucking over 100 miles an hour here at the Remington Park Forest track. The OKC Mile, number two of the 2021 season. Ryan, look at him really get over that back seat before he heads out onto the straightaway. Meese at the top spot, 40.203. A little bit slower than they were earlier, but Meese was quick time in that first round as well. So it's Meese, 40.203, quickest here in this second round of practice. Right behind him is Brandon Price. We were just watching him for a couple of laps, 4.0.258. Big P, the flagman's already reaching for the checkered flag as we take a look at Meese, the five-time champ. Factory Indian Motorcycle Progressive Insurance, Rogers Racing, SDI Racing. 
Steve De Lorenzi is here. I know Craig Rogers is here as well. Checkered flag is out for the groups. Here comes everybody else. There's Price. Here comes Rispoli on the 43. The Harley, the only Harley in this class. Colby Carlisle, Fisher, Van Coy, Pearson, Jiggy Dog, J.D. Beach, and Bronson Baum at the back of the pack. Like I mentioned, the 44, Brandon Robinson did not go out in that session, so he'll rely on uh, qualifying times coming up. Doesn't, says, I don't need any more practice. Meese, quick, quick time so far in practice, 40.203 in this session. He was actually quickest in the first round, too, 39.360. Mentioned it before, but he won the only other three times we were here besides last night. So Meese definitely knows his way around this racetrack, feels comfortable at the OKC mile. Price finished up fifth last night, ends up second quick in practice. Briar Bauman uh, finishes in the third position in this practice session. He actually was second in the main event last night. Up next, we will go into qualifying. Qualifying will begin next with the AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. Chad Coase was quickest in practice with a 4.0.757 on a borrowed motorcycle from Latest Motors. It's pretty cool when you can go through the pit area and borrow a motorcycle, borrow some parts from your neighbors and get back out on the racetrack. They said he uh, broke his crank yesterday on his primary bike, his only bike. So what I'm thinking is he probably didn't tech through a practice or a second bike, a backup bike. So that's why he was not allowed to switch to a different motorcycle yesterday. As Corey Texter leads out group number one, the only group of production twins, here they come for qualifying. AFT production twins presented by Vance and Hines. 65, Corey Texter, 62, Dan Bromley, 79, Dalton Gauthier, 49, Chad Coase, 25, Ben Lau, 68, Barnes, 44, Cameron Smith got second last night, his first podium, 64, Danny Essling from Tulsa, Oklahoma, 42, Jeremiah Duffy, 31, Dylan Bell, 71, Pat Buchanan, 50, J-Mac, Jimmy McAllister, 161, Casey Sisko, 223, Jeffrey Lowry, 276, Brian LaFelt, the 15 from Tulsa is Gary Ketchum and Brandon Newman. Picking up a ride in the production twins class. It is his birthday today as well. Dan Dallas Daniels is in the singles class. It is his birthday also. Our racing chaplain, Raymond Rizzo, waving that green flag down there. He's our assistant flagman. Getting some practice in right now with that green flag. Whoa, Corey was all kinds of sideways coming off a of turn number two. Remember, he didn't finish all the laps of practice that last time out. And now it's qualifying time. You got to come out here and lay down the quickest time you can. If you're here with us, you can get your smartphone out. You can get your tablet out. Go to the App Store, the Marketplace, wherever you get your apps. And download the American Flat Track app. You can watch the timing and scoring just like I am doing up here in the booth. Vtex, the 65, leads the way. 68, Ryan Barnes goes to the top spot, though, here in qualifying. 4-1.234. Had a mechanical issue last night, pulled off. Look at Bell having to swing out wide on the 31 bike, actually swing up the inside. A couple of different lines when they come off the corners. There's a look at the 62, Dan the man, Dan Bromley. Cameron Smith right behind him. These two were on the podium last night, second and third. Third and second, however you want to look at it. Here comes the 44, swinging up the inside, using a little draft pass. We didn't see very much drafting last night. That looked like a classic draft pass from the 44 going around the 62 going into turn number one. Chad Coast goes to the top spot on the Harley-Davidson XG750. California kid, 40.769, one-tenth faster than Ryan Barnes, 40.869. This is qualifying. Chad's at the tail of the field. He's coming across the start finish line right now on that borrowed motorcycle, Chad Coase. That time by was a 4.1.399. Must have been experimenting, loading a little bit. He's up in the deep stuff. Man, he's way up there off the racetrack down here, turns one and two. Now he's on our screen right here in front of us, coming off a of turn or two. Get it pointed the right direction. He'll tuck in and get small as he can. He's catching up to Newman on the, four, on the 90 bike. Chad Coase, he's running really high up down here in one and two right on the edge of the cushion down there in three and four. White flag is out, one more mile to go in this qualifying session. 
Chad Coase at the top spot, 4-0.769 to catch us some traffic coming towards the start finish line. They're going three wide across the finish line. Takes a look over his shoulder. Chad Coase is feeling it tonight. 4-0.769, just barely off of his practice time. Chad Coase right there down the back straightaway. One of the bike is off the pace right in front of him. I believe that might be the 42, Jeremiah Duffy, who's having such a good day yesterday. He pulls out of the way up in the high line down there in three and four. Chad's going to go by him right there. Yes, it was Duffy off the pace. That was our, our fast qualifier yesterday. Sat on the pole of his semifinal. Jeremiah Duffy having an issue. Checker flag is up. Chad Coast. Here comes. There's the 15 bike. Here comes the 90, Brandon Newman on his birthday. He did not finish his first practice session either. It looks like he's not going to finish his qualifying. Jeremiah Duffy is coasting this way as well. So checkered flag is out here. Production Twins qualifying round number one. There are two rounds of qualifying for all three classes. AFT singles will be up next. There'll be three groups of AFT singles riders. If you're here with us, the open paddock area, the open pits for the rider autograph session going on at 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. tonight. Opening ceremonies at 6.20, so we're moving opening ceremonies up about 10 minutes. You will see all of our semifinals before the open pit area to meet your favorite rider. To get to the pit area, you go right down here in front of the front straightaway, right in front of the kicker, living lounge booth. Stop by and see Mad Dog. I see him down there checking out what's going on on the track. Mad Dog's checking it out. Stop by and see those folks before you head to the open paddock area. The open pits are open from 7.30 until 8.30. Rider autograph session. They're going to send the water truck out here real quick. Put a couple of laps on with the water truck before we bring out the singles. There are 31 singles in today's event. The 49, Chad Coe's quickest in qualifying here in the production twins, 4-0.769. Second, 68, Ryan Barnes on the Kawasaki, 4-0.869. Jeremiah Duffy's third, even though he coasted across the line. The 42 bike, 4-1.168. 65, Corey Texter, last night's winner, our points leader. Fourth here in qualifying, 4-1.799. Dalton Gauthier is fifth on the 79 bike, 4-1.893. Sixth is Dylan Bell from Kansas on his Harley back here in sixth to 31, 42.094. Cameron Smith finished second last night, seventh right now. I think he might have been a little bit shocked to be on the podium last night. We'll hear from him a little bit later on how things are updating. They just changed right here in front of my own two eyes. Cameron Smith, 42.105, is sixth. Seventh is Ben Lau. Eighth is Dan Bromley, who is also on the podium. He finished eighth in this first round of qualifying. Jeffrey Lowry, ninth. Danny Eslick, the Oklahoma rider, back here in tenth. AFT singles are already staging up, getting ready to go. They will come out in three groups, five laps apiece. And then we'll have our Mission Super Twins first round of qualifying. Again, opening ceremonies at 6.20 p.m. here this evening. Uh, we'll run through all of our semifinals. That is our plan anyway. And then we'll have the open pit area for you to meet your favorite rider. That is scheduled right now from 7.30 until 8.30. That will let the sun set, give us time to work on the racetrack before we get ready for the Mission Challenge which is basically a four-lap dash, too fast, too tasty dash for $5,000. After the mission challenge, we'll have our three main events. That's what the rest of the evening looks like out here at the OKC Mile. One more lap with the water truck is what we're being told up here in the booth. Don't forget to stop by and see the rookie class of 79 underneath the grandstands. They're in some air conditioning. If you want to go in there and catch some cool air, stop by and see Charlie Roberts and Tammy and all the folks helping down there at the rookie class of 79, raising money for the people who get hurt in our sport, which is flat track motorcycle racing. They help the pros here in American Flat Track. They help amateur riders. They help vintage riders. And it's all because of you fans. So whatever you donate, whatever you buy some memorabilia, they've got an, a, a couple different raffles you can buy. You can win an Indian FTR 1200. It's on display down below. They've got all kinds of cool stuff. That's Charlie Roberts and the gang with a rookie class of 79. Right next door is the American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Stop by and get the event shirt. Since it's an Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City shirt, they've got this shirt. I'm going to say it's got the Indian color to it. So stop by and check it out. They have two different colors of the event shirt here for the OKC Mile. They got a new shirt down there. It says anyone but me. I wonder how Jared Meese feels about that. I'm Scotty Dubler up here in the booth. Glad to be at my home race from Oklahoma City. 
We journey on down the road. Next weekend, we'll be at the Ohio National Lima, Ohio, next Saturday night. Always the last Saturday in June. We're in Lima, Ohio. If you like this loose racetrack, we got some loose pea gravel up next, next week. And also, don't forget, right after uh, opening ceremonies, it will be time to switch on over to Track Pass. If you folks are watching right now on Facebook or however else you might be watching, right after opening ceremonies, we'll switch on over to Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. The bikes are firing up in turn number one, AFT singles. Three groups, first round of qualifying. Number one, Dallas Daniels. 15 is Mikey Rush. 18, Max Whale. 52, Shane, that's Exter Bauman. She's won here before. She struggled a little bit last night. We'll see if she can recover. 13, Morgan Mishler. 17, last night's winner, Henry Wiles. 105, Brandon Kitchen. 48, Trent Lowe. 21, Trevor Bruner. That's T-Money. 51, Cole Zabala in the 38. That's the Dean Machine. Tanner Dean on the first impression race team. Here they come. This is qualifying round one. We'll take your fastest lap from round one or round number two, and that's how you'll get qualified tonight. Everybody trying to get a good qualifying spot. There are only rows of four now. You start on rows of four, so the top four from qualifying, actually the top eight from qualifying, will be on the front row of one of two semifinals in all three of our classes. Look at the Essence and Yamaha side by side. Now here comes Shayna Texter up the inside. Shayna says, I want to lead some laps out here at OKC. Here they come. Mikey Rush goes blasting on by. Rush goes to the point. Shayna Texter right behind. We got the factory Red Bull KTMs and the Estenson Racing Yamahas right there, one and two. Now throw the, uh, the uh, yellow Suzuki up there into the mix. That's Trent Lowe on the Wally Brown Racing Suzuki. Down the back shoot, Mikey Rush trying to break away from everybody else. His teammate now right behind him, Dallas Daniels on the one bike. It's his 18th birthday. Young Dallas is already 18 years old. Very rushed, feeling right at home, getting sideways, trying to put his foot on the peg as soon as possible, get that traction to the rear wheel. Rush at the point, Daniels in second. Shane and Texter right behind him, them on the 52 bike. They reach up, pull a tear off. First lap is in the books. Look at the, really, the body movement going to turn one. Mikey Rush actually just looked like he really pulled up on the handlebars when he went into turn one. A very drastic body movement on the 15 bike of Mikey Rush. Kitchen in the top spot. Brandon Kitchen, 105, goes to the head of the class. 42.418. He's just at the tail of this group. So he's catching a big bubble of air. That's allowing Kitchen to catch up to him. But he's also running high, wide, and handsome. We'll call that the Morgan Mishler line. He is way up there by the air fence. The 105, look at him in the deep stuff. Now he drops down to the bottom of the racetrack. He's trying to get in line behind somebody. He's going to end up right beside somebody. 48 goes on by Shayna Texter Bauman. Here's a look at the 105 the kitchen. Watch him up in the deep stuff. He even goes out of the camera shot right there. He's up there against the progressive banners on the air fence. There's the 48 of Trent Lowe. He's at the Wally Brown Racing Rowdy Energy. How cool it'd be to be sponsored by Kurt Bush. I'm sorry, Kyle Bush and Rowdy Energy. It's pretty neat. There goes Mor Morgan Mister going to the high line. He's up there with his buddy Brandon Kitchen. Look at those guys up in the deep stuff. That's got to be really fun. Look at Shane and Texter Bauman right through the middle, trying to find the smoothest way. This is just as good as the main event, folks, right here. The white flag is out. This is just qualifying, but they're out there doing what they can. Henry Wiles goes to the top spot, the 17 now, quick time. 42.271. White flag is out. Look at him, three wide. Man. This is amazing. I mean, you would think this was the main event. Look at Kitchen all over the motorcycle coming off of turn number two. Every time these folks are on the racetrack, it is exciting. Shayna Texter Bauman right there with Morgan Mishler on the 52 is Shayna, 13 Mishler in the deep stuff. Wow. I love it. Shayna up the inside, going to push Morgan a little bit wider. Here they come to the checkered flag. Mikey Rush leads another lap. He'll be in there in second spot right now. 17 of Wiles. Looking strong. 42.218. So track slowing down just a little bit, maybe because it's getting a little bit rougher than it was earlier. Here comes Wiles right behind his teammate, the 21 Trevor Bruner. Bruner not quite as fast as he was earlier and not as fast as he was last night. 42.797. About a half a second off of Henry Wiles, his uh, teammate. 
The Turner Racing Hondas looks like they're going to stop down the back straightaway, do a little practice start. They were told that if they're going to do that, that is where they're going to do it, off of the line, the starting, or off the racing line, so they don't put grooves and notches in the line. Wild says, I don't need any more practice starts. Goes on by. Rush didn't stop for a practice start either. Wiles at the top spot so far. That is group number one. Wiles at the top spot, number 17, 42.218. Mikey Rush, Brandon Kitchen third, Dallas Daniels fourth. Maxwell fifth, Trent Lowe moves up to that sixth spot on that last lap. Trevor Bruner is seventh, Cole Zabala eighth, Morgan Mishler ninth, Shana Texter Bauman tenth, and the Dean Machine, Tanner Dean back there in 11th. 11 bikes were on the racetrack. Group number two also will, uh, looks like at group number two will have 10 bikes. 99, Kevin Stallings should lean them out. 19 is James Ott. 143, Cody Kopp. 94 is Ryan Wells. 26, Aiden Roos Evans. 11, Andrew Luker. 124, Hunter Bauer. 161, Casey Cisco. 55, Tyler Raggio. The 191 is Dustin Brown. Bikes are going into gear. There they are sitting back there. And look at this. They're anxious to get out there. I love these youngsters still ready to ready to get out there and go as fast as they can. They're also trying to break away from everybody else. Some some people want to go out there and run in a group. Looks like this group trying to get out there and get away from everybody. That's Cody Cop in the lead. They call him Hot Rod, number 143. His dad was the 2000 AMA Grand National Champion back when it was called AMA Pro. Now we are American Flat Track. Smoking Joe Kopp, and he was number 43 when he won the championship. The next year, he ran the number one plate. That's what happens in every class. And then he went on to be number three, Smoking Joe Kopp. Second generation flat tracker, Cody Kopp, out there on that Honda. We'll come off of turn number four to the waving of the green flag. The clock starts right now. He's got some hand guards on there on that Jones Honda. Smart top Honda. One, four, three. Next year, he'll have a two-digit number. When you first go to the pro ranks, you have to have a three-digit number until you earn points in that class. Then you drop down to a two-digit, or unless you win the championship, you will have the number one the next year if you remain in that class. 19, James Ott behind him. Here comes 124, Hunter Bauer, NKR Canada. And, whoa, hang on, Ott. NKR Canada teamed up with the Waters Auto Body KTM. They have two riders. They're both in this group, 124 Hunter Bauer and the 26 of Aiden Roos Evans. We watched Aiden Roos Evans limp back to the pit area after his practice session. See if that bothers him at all. Actually, I don't see the 26 bike out there unless that's him at the back of the pack coming this way. And nope, that's a Honda back there. So I believe Roos Evans might be uh, skipping this qualifying session. Hopefully he's not done for the night. Haven't heard anything from down there in the pit area just yet. That's the 94 of Wells, the 99 of Stallings. Here comes the next group of riders. Luker goes to the high side on the 11 bike. Rackley Racing, Kieran Racing entry number 11. Hunter Bauer sneaks on by the 19 of James Ott. Fastest bike on the racetrack right now is the 99, actually, of Kevin Stallings. The 191, Dustin Brown, is in the 11th spot. Stallings moves all the way up to 10th on his Honda, 42.934. 7 tenths slower than our quick time of Henry Wiles with a 42.218. Fastest lap, Henry Wiles, 42.218 so far in this qualifying session. Everybody gets two rounds of qualifying. Hunter Bauer goes up the racetrack, goes way up in the deep stuff. Watch how he's getting right up against the hay bales and the air fence down there. Getting his money's worth, right? Gotta check out the entire racetrack. His first trip to the Oklahoma City Mile. He cost him a position on the racetrack. Now he's gonna drop to the bottom and see what he can do. Now he goes up the racetrack just a little bit. Carry that much momentum, it's very hard to slow these things down, especially when you when you have some draft to help pulling you into the corners. Wow, Bauer's all over the motorcycle coming off the of turn or two again that time. James Ott, the 19 bike, moves into the seventh position. So Ott is the quickest motorcycle on the racetrack right now. The 19 of James Ott from Simi Valley, California. He's on the screen right there, right in front of Hunter Bauer. Bauer on the 124 is actually second. Hunter Bauer, second, 42.348. So Hunter Bauer and the 19, the two quickest bikes on the racetrack. Maybe they're working together a little bit, using a little draft as they come across the checkered flag, the finish line. 
Bauer up to second behind the American Honda. Bauer on the NKR Canada Waters Auto Body KTM. That's a good run for Hunter Bauer. Yesterday was his first ever mile. This is his first season with us. He's got the rider coach of Doug Lawrence. And that is very impressive for the youngster from Canada. 42.348. Henry Wiles still quick time here in round number one. 42.218. Let's look at the replay. This is about, whoa, man. That was coming off a tournament, too. I said he was all over the motorcycle. I don't think I exaggerated that time. Wow. What a save by this youngster. 124, Hunter Bauer. Making the Canadians proud up there north of the border. They're down here for work. They are professional motorcycle racers. That is how they're able to go back and forth from the United States to Canada. Some of the folks actually are leaving their motorcycles down here as we take a look at the, uh, the, the qualifying session so far from round number one. Wiles at the top spot. Hunter Bauer up to second. Mikey Rush is third. Kitchen in fourth. Dallas Daniels fifth. Maxwell. James Ott is seventh. Shayna Texter Bauman, a notable up there in uh, 14th here on my speed charts. Dustin Brown right behind her, the, fifth, the uh, 191 and 15th. Tanner Dean, Andrew Luker moved up to the 17th position in that one. One more group to go here in this first round of qualifying timed practice for the AFT singles. 175, Taryn Santero. 135, Ezra Brusky. 298, that's Sweet Heat, Trent Pickle. 243, Jared Lowe. 109, Billy the Kid, Billy Ross. 156, Jordan Jean. 101, Grant Holmes. 121, Jacob Cassio on the borrowed motorcycle from Raggio Racing. 121, Cassio. 133, David Wigan from Tulsa, Oklahoma. 182 is Travis Penton, the fourth. A lot of these folks are just moving into the professional ranks here in American Flat Track. And Taron, this time, instead of leading it, he's going to go out the back of the pack. He's got that bright green Kawasaki. Big group of riders on the back chute off of turn number two down the back straightaway. That's Billy Ross out in front, Michigan rider in front of the bright yellow Suzuki. That it will be 101 Grant Holmes, California rider. Down the, on the front straightaway now, the green flag is out. Big P will wave the green flag. That means the clock will start right now. Five laps the distance. AFT singles. After this one, we will have Looks like after this, we'll have a little track prep. The Honda Talon will come out and put a few laps out there on the racetrack. Folks tuning in from all across the world. I had some friends tuned in last night from Brazil. They're going to let me know when they're tuned in here tonight. We got the folks out at the Lodi Cycle Bowl checking in on us, watching their California riders out there. That's one of them right here on the screen, 101 Grant Holmes. Holmes trying to move up the leaderboard right now. He's currently 22nd. That looked like a really quick lap for Holmes. Gets by the 109 of Billy Ross. And Holmes moves up. Actually, he actually went down the spot. Jared Lowe moves up to 16th. Slide Holmes back to eight, 18th right now. Travis Petten currently 21st. The other California rider out there, 175, Taryn Santero on that Kawasaki at the back of the pack. Reaching up, grabbing tear off the clear piece of plastic that goes over their lens. There's Jared Lowe. That's Trent Lowe's little brother. Little big brother, because he's bigger than Trent. Second generation flat tractor. Their dad used to be national number 48. That was Sam Lowe. I used to race against him. There's a couple of the up and comers right here on the screen. 133, David Wigan from Tulsa, Oklahoma. We we'll go back out front. heating up. This is just as good as the racing action out here in qualifying. Holmes takes him off of turn number two onto the back chute. 109 Billy the Kid. Here comes Jared Lowe, the 243. Lowe's going to hey, downshift the motorcycles going in the corners, it looks like, here on these single 450cc bikes. They'll upshift when they get onto the front straightaway or the back straightaway, whichever one they're on. Put it in the high gear. Tuck in and draft. Lowe trying to make the draft pass, but he pulls out really a little bit too soon, but we're going to use some horsepower to make that pass. We're not going to use the draft. Jared Lowe gets on by the leader. 243, currently 16th quick here in round number one, right behind Dustin Brown. Henry Wilde still has the quick time, 42.218. Grant Holmes comes back up the inside, trying to get by the 243 of Jared Lowe. Holmes goes back to the point, bringing with him Billy the Kid. 
Billy Ross. Goes low up to the high side. He's pushing the edge of the cushion. Holmes going to bring him off of the final corner. Checkered flag will come out this time by. Look at all five of them fan out across the finish line. Holmes leads them across the line. Holmes is in the 17th spot. Grant Holmes on that Suzuki. 4-3.484. Henry Wiles has the quick time. That's bad news for everybody else. He's quickest in practice, quickest in qualifying round number one, and he's last night's winner. That is bad news for everybody else. They stop on the back straightaway, do a little practice start. Ooh, Holmes got a bad one right there. I think I'd stop and do another one. Yeah, I think they've uh, had a few too many practice starts, just my opinion. I think they... Uh, I think one practice start a day should be about enough. Yeah, they're trying to do it inside of the racing line, but some of those youngsters kind of stop just wherever and get a practice start. Look at Jared Lowe says, give me one more chance to go through three and four as fast as I can. That's it for our first round of qualifying for the uh, singles class. The Production Twins first round of qualifying is done. Up next, when we uh, come back to the racetrack, Mission Super Twins qualifying round number one is coming up next. We're at the Oklahoma City Mile. Zandy Motorcycle, Oklahoma City, OKC Mile, presented by Kicker. We'll be back with more qualifying up next. Pro. We make innovative tools and products that help you maintain and repair motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. Like the patented Pro-Filled Air Chuck, helping you manage tire air pressure on your motorcycle, ATV, or UTV. Easily adjust the pro Air Airchuck. Get past hot disc brake rotors with the pivoting angled head. Connect it with an airline. Or pair it with a Motion Pro digital tire pressure gauge. Reach for the pro Air Airchuck to manage your tires. Get yours at MotionPro.com or visit Power Sports stores nationwide. You own the job and everything that comes with it. The mornings that start too early, the nights that go too late, and every unbelievable thing in between. It's good to know you can rent whatever construction equipment you need from people who do whatever it takes. Visit us at catrentalstore.com. Dunlop is the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. We make tires in America for racing and street racing such as our creditworthy Progressive American Flat Track Spec Racing Tire, the DT4, and the DT3, which is now the Street Legal K180. Learn more about Dunlop Tires at DunlopMotorcycleTires.com. Falcon Tires is proud to be the official light truck tire of Progressive American Flat Track. Choosing the right tire for your truck or SUV is critical, and Falcon has you covered offering highway terrains to all terrains through torture-tested mud terrains. For more information on Falcon's full line of Wild Peak products, 
please visit us at www.falcontire.com. Honda's all-new Talon 1000 X4, the official sports side-by-side of American Flat Track, and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1,000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The Talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at klotzlube.com. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue-green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and a setting sun, then you owe it to yourself to check out Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we've been making dreams come true for over a decade. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. SBS is your single source for brake parts and components. From pads to rotors, shoes, and other important parts covering motorcycles, scooters, motocross bikes, ATVs, and UTVs. We create the power to stop you so you can go ahead. Find the right parts for your bike at www.sbsbrakes.com. Wheeland designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheeland product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. We're the Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. We understand the challenges riders face every day. As riders, we want to share the road and be seen by motorists. Remaining visible is critical to our safety and well-being. That's why we work tirelessly to promote motorcycle safety and awareness. We're proud to support our community that includes riders of all stripes, if you've been injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS or visit lawtigers.com. The Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. And welcome back to the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City. It's the OKC Mile Number 2 presented by Kicker Performance Audio. We are in sunny, warm Oklahoma City. A little bit cooler than yesterday. We're at 92.9. We got like it's like a radio station. 90, 92.9 degrees at six o'clock. It's cooling all the way down to 92.1 at seven. 90.3 degrees. We're up here in the booth, and this guy just joined me up here. It is the legend himself. I've seen you on MTV. I'm old enough to no, remember you, you on Scotty, MTV. You were like two when I was on MTV. Yeah, whatever, dude. I'm not. I'm not that young. I came up here, Scotty Dublu, because a, of course, you're doing such a great job here with AFT, the Boys of American Flat Track. But not only did I feel bad that you've been up here calling all the practices by, by, by myself, yourself. but let, let's be honest. The main reason I came up here is it's air conditioned up here, Scotty. Shh, so tell, I came up here because Scotty's got a nice my air conditioning secrets. room. Don't, don't. But this is an incredible view of an absolutely amazing track. I've been to a lot of the tracks on the circuit, but I've never been to the OKC Mile. I know that this is your hometown. I know this is a track that, that's very important for you and, and so much racing history with you and your family yep. in Oklahoma. But as far as the miles go... Um, this track is just beautiful, and the thing that I'm I'm really enjoying the most is that it's really unpredictable. There's so much parity that we're seeing in the sport, yep. and I've had a, about two energy drinks. What do you think? Yeah, I, you're, you're all amped up and ready to go. <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking about uh, uh, you know, par- I don't know what we're even doing right now. They're they're in my ear telling me we got something new, some new segment. I'm at my home track. They're trying to make me look bad. My whole family is down here in the suites, and we're gonna try something new right here. Of course, let's do it while we're in Oklahoma City. Let's make Scotty look dumb. 
we're going to learn a thing or two, what we may have missed yesterday, and they're supposed, we're supposed to give our first reaction of what we think. So are you ready? Uh, to I guess what we're going to be doing is, and by the way, we are live right now, if you couldn't tell. We're going to be looking at clips of stuff that happened yesterday. Okay, and it's our... Our and I first assume time, it's some clips our, of flat track racing, right? Our, our first time. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and Kristen Beat is here roaming around somewhere, too. She's been down the pits working right. and getting this, the storylines for NBC Sports, but she also helps us out in the live broadcast, too. So uh, what do you think? You want to take a look at it? I guess we're going to watch this monitor up here. See, I get, okay. this is how I get to watch the races right here, really. So this is how I cheat. Hey, so, guys, I'm here, too. Oh, hey, Beat. What's, What's up? up? What's up? All right, first clip. So Throwing it in sideways. Look at that. He is getting all <laughs> right? kinds of roost right there. Look at that. That's, that, that, that's the one thing that I Ooh. think that's so amazing is there is such a difference between the rider that's in first and the rider that's in second. First place, you look at Corey Texter last night. His bike looked pristine. Everybody's second beyond. You couldn't even see their number plates. Kristen, what did you what did you think when you, when you saw that shot? Uh, first thing that came into my mind was just throwing it sideways. These guys were working it around the track, and uh, this is a rider's track, so you have to be on top of the bike. You have to be comfortable with letting the back end drift, and uh, Briar, Bauman, Jared Mees, those guys up front were absolutely doing it last night. I'm also thinking a face full of dirt for whoever ran behind him. And and when you're in that roost, it actually slows you down. It's it's not, not quite as... as as, as bad as putting a parachute behind you, but that dirt is forcing you, it's just holding you back. You can really just feel it kind of just bogging you down. Well, Let's my, take okay, a look. I got a question for you. What does it do to the radiator? Because I would think that it if you're in second, you're just filling the radiator. So. But a lot of guys have a radiator screen to protect that. Absolutely. There's taking another look at it. He is right here in the thick of the roost right now. Let's take a look at clip number two. This is all surprise. It's all new to us. We have not seen this yet. Are you ready for number two? I'm excited. Here we go. Watch the outside. Oh, oh! Whoa! Was that a double? Did he just pop a wheelie? I, I, I think he just jumped a double on the front straightaway. This has almost become the Oklahoma, <laughs> Oklahoma Mile TT. Here we go. Let's watch it again. So what had happened is they drugged the track down the front straightaway, but they had a transponder loop right there at the finish line, so they weren't able to drag it down. But look at that. Brian I catching had no air. idea. That, and, and, and here's the other thing. How fast are they going at this point? I would say 110, 115 110. miles per hour. Briar went for the outside line, <laughs> which obviously is much bumpier. But, I mean, it looked like it was planned. He looked so smooth. I think that's the term full send, guys. That was a that send. Was there you full go. send. That was very I, I love that. Good job, Kristen. I like that. We'll call that one hashtag, hashtag full send. Or hashtag very sendy. <laughs> hashtag hang on. There we go. Look at this one. Oh. Bruner, we know this sideways. isn't going to be good. Up and over the infield no. dirt roll. Hits a dirt bump. It hits a dirt ah, bump. Now watch ow, this. Ow, hang ow, on. Ow, ow. And ouch. Oh. Right there. The, the, the best thing when I, I look, I got goosebumps right now. The, be the best thing is he's with us today mm -hmm. racing, and he looks strong. Cleared by the local uh, hospital, examined. Man, let's, let's watch it one more time, oh, Kristen. Don't make me watch it again. This, I know. I watched it a, a, a few too many times yesterday, up and over the dirt roll in the inside, and then he hits those dirt bumps that were unfortunately in the infield. It's you know, spectacular in the worst way. Uh, and and you, know, you know what? The best part is, too, nobody hit him. Well, that's, that's amazing. I mean, you look at things like I didn't notice that bump that was on the far inside. Right. If that bump wasn't there, I mean, you can't do the what ifs. But if that bump wasn't there, he, he would he have gone into the track? Also, visibility right. is so tough with so much dirt. But mm -hmm. that says so much about the safety measures that American Flat Track is using now with the airbags, the airbag suits, suit, and stuff yes. like that. But that was absolutely incredible. And uh, it, uh, it was it was it's amazing. He's out there today riding, the helmets, which I didn't think was going to happen. The helmets, the airbag and suits, fast. and he yeah he's flying right now today too. Let's look at our next one out here. Watch out, a turtle on the racetrack. <laughs> I thought we were gonna have a goose out there. Nope, we got a turtle on the racetrack. And Steve Moorhead to the rescue. Are you sure it was a turtle and not a tortoise? I'm a hundred percent. That is a red-eared slider. I'm a turtle. Exper expert. <laughs> Is that the proper name for it? The red-eared slider. Don't you eat those in Oklahoma? Well, some people do. <laughs> no, that was a red-eared slider. They live in the pond in the Should middle of the racetrack. Should we name him or her? Uh, what, do we get? what do you got, Kristen? Let's Any, name Anything but me's. No, that's a T-shirt. <laughs> They, did, did you, you see, see that, that shirt? They're selling the anyone but me's T-shirt. Well, which on. right now, let's what? talk about your shirt. Look, you're on the this camera. is this is Ooh, the this man. is the event Fancy. shirt, and I gotta tell you, you know, I am a little bit partial to the Indians, but I and, but, wait. And okay, the wait. Indian of Oklahoma well, City. Hold, hold on a second, just so everybody knows. Okay, I ride an Indian. I have a Harley tattoo somewhere. Right, I have a Harley tattoo. I have to look because I don't Love remember. It. And I also have a Honda. 
So I'm so keeping pretty much. You're just generic. So any of the other mo any of the other manufacturers, <laughs> there's plenty of rooms Here in my go. garage. Here's the next oh. clip. Oh, look at this, Mister. Thumbs out, guns out. Mister. I, I gotta say unlucky. this. I gotta say this. Yeah. As long as I've been in the sport, well, this is my second year. Ryan Varnes, you're you're watching, and it's like there's always something. Like even when he's in the lead, and I hate to say it, I saw it when he looked fast yesterday, and I said. Something's gonna happen. This guy if seems to have. If it's not bad luck, he has no luck. Oh my Absolutely. god! If, it, if it's not, if it's not mechanical, it's he gets in a wreck, and the poor guy looks so strong, and then but he something never happens. Gives up. Everybody Correct. has a feel-good story, and he's not giving up. Never okay, gives up. And, and wait, also, wait, 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 wait. everybody has a feel-good story. That's not a feel-good story. <laughs> That's a feel-crappy <laughs> story. Feel bad story. Poor Barnes. Every wait. time I see him, he looks he, strong, he's and then he's pushing you know good. The good thing is, he's always fast. He's usually up front. Unless something goes wrong, and then and then he obviously goes back. He's out there running his bike, trying to finish the race. Okay, I think it'd be better to be medium fast and finish the race. To medium be really fast, fast. Medium fast. Right. Term, Ricky. Medium if, fast? If, if, Is that like your extra medium shirt? It's something like that. But I think it'd be better to be medium and finish the race <laughs> than be really fast for the starting of the race and then the rest of it pushing, that, getting passed that by is, the red slider that, tortoise. That is race strategy from Ricky Rackman. I like it. Let's let's look at the next one. Here we go. Oh, yeah, this is where Cameron oh, Smith, some sparks yeah. start flying off. Yes. Was it his bike or was it the hot shoe? Uh, it's coming up higher on the motorcycle. He doesn't even have his foot down. Let me just say, man, that was a hard one. So originally, I thought it was sparks coming off the brakes. Like when you get through your brake pads, the metal on metal throw sparks. Looking at the tape over and over again, I talked to the useful tree in the truck and is actually on the sprocket side. So I'm not exactly sure where the, uh, where the sparks are coming from. I wish we had the, the shot from the inside, but... Uh, man, a good ride from him. Second place Gotta last night. Gotta be honest. I mean, there's a lot of these riders. The longer that I've worked in the sport, the more riders that I like, and I try to remain neutral. But I really wanted Cameron to do well, and it was really good to see him finish on the podium. Where there wasn't sparks is when he was in victory lane. Well, wow. Uh, <laughs> I gotta talk. I gotta talk to that get, guy today. Yeah, sometimes you get it, and sometimes you don't. I wonder uh, if maybe their fatigue played into it. But dude, like you just got on the podium, pop some. Champagne. I wanted some I tears. Think, I think. I wanted some I, fireworks. I, I think he was surprised to be on the podium. He wasn't ready, and I don't think it had set in by the time he got to the podium. I think he just hadn't taken it all in, in yet. I well, bet if you well, talk I'll to him right now. Him today. I'm going to go talk to him right now. We're going to ask him. I'm going to say, I don't want you on the podium unless you show us some emotion. Yeah. I want emotion That's what from I'm talking the riders. About. That's right. Yeah. We got another one? A passionate man. All right. Ackman, he is. All right. Here comes the next one. I've never seen any of this stuff. Oh, oh Slick. Danny Eslick. Gotta love this. Slick. Okay. Have you guys ever noticed, like, Danny Eslick's voice is so deep and like, so, like, man, I that, just got off a well, ranch well, and a horse. It's, it's he works at the carnival when he's well, on, not on a race weekend. And, uh, is he a from, carny? And from what I, I heard, right be. before each main, he smokes a carton of cigarettes, okay? That's what they used so to do back in the day. So that could be another thing. Now, now, that is a prime example. Eslick is a prime example of the, the opposite of what I want from Cameron. Eslick is great. Dude, king of the baggers, fourth place. Yeah, last weekend. The guy weekend. is a monster. Yep. He has fun, and we have fun. And I know that when he's out there throwing frisbees to I the fans and stuff like that. I can always expect him to whistle when I walk by the pits. So. Oh, really? That's expected. <laughs> Nobody whistles I like when it. I walk by the pits. Me neither. Yeah, Man, what it. are we doing wrong, Ricky? I, you got the long hair. Everything it doesn't matter. Uh, between me and Kristen, I would rather whistle at Kristen B. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, let's see what we got for us. We've never seen this stuff. Double checkered flag, Henry Wiles whipping the Wee horse. Giddy. Is that what he was doing? Yeah, absolutely. Giddy up. We're on a horse track. I thought he was cooling it down. You should know that. You're a horse person. Come on, Kristen. I don't whip horses. Oh, okay. She's uh, well, she I'm not gonna say I'm gonna stay away from this topic. I All think right. I think Kristen learned a valuable lesson when interviewing um Hammer and Hank before the race, right? Yeah, don't listen to him. <laughs> he's full of he, he said, he's full of something that he, comes from a horse. He said he wasn't gonna be doing that well today. He was just you know, telling Kristen that's he what he thought. He tried to tell me the bikes weren't yeah. good going, and he's like, No, yeah. we're not gonna be any good. No, those no, bikes, bikes are bikes top are notch. All three of those Turner Racing American Hondas are up there in the front. Let's take it Henry one more time. He's taking his left hand off because you got to keep that right hand with the throttle wide open. He's kind of whipping that thing or, or across that checkered flag way out in front. Won by almost a whole straightaway right here. And he's fast here today. He's got your top spot so well, far. Look how rough. You, you saw that he just started to get out of the groove. I mean, yeah, yep. the race was over. But how rough it is when you get out of the lane. The thing so that I thought was swap on that really stretch. interesting in practice that it looked like a lot of people were taking the rougher outside lane. I think that what we're going to see tonight is we're going to see a lot of racing that might be wider. Maybe we're going to see some more three wide racing. Possibly so. And it's not as rough. They spent a lot of time last night. And even this morning when I got here, the graders were out there grading it off. So they went about 
Looks like about 18 inches deep. Uh, I don't know if they were quite that deep last night. They're trying to get to the harder pack surface at the bottom of the, of the facility. It is a new surface out here at Remington Park, and we got to get onto the racetrack and start working on it on Monday as they're racing horses out here last weekend. Last clip. Let's check it out. Here we go. It's the 44. Ooh, on the foot pegs. I remember this one. Hang on. Yep. Whoa. And look at this. You, he never, Let ever off. cracked the throttle. Welcome to the rodeo, boys. Giddy up, right? Right, Kristen? Well, golly, he was riding a bull over there and just got up on the pegs. That was gnarly to watch. Yeah, when they, when they talk about the original extreme sport, that's a clip you want to see that right there. That is what there. they say that about flat track. A gnarly. lot of people said, hey, what Ricky, why did Buck you? and Broncos. Yeah. You're the horse girl. That's a bucking right. Indian. Right? <laughs> I mean, that was an FTR that, that's 750. Thing. Look I at mean, that. Remember when we were going into the season, we go, I know what it's going to be with AFT. It's going to be another know. another Mies and another Bauman battle. No, we've got parity this year. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, we don't know who's going to be the three. And now that we've got, you know, Sammy Halbert's out, so now we can put somebody else into the mix. And uh, I, I, th I think B-Rob's going to be hard to beat this year. He's on it right now. He, he is a he... viable championship contender, and I guarantee you that statement is living rent-free in a few people's heads in the paddock, right? Rent-free. That guy has also picked up three mission challenges, which is $15,000. and he's Towards getting a wedding. Yeah, he's getting married at the end of the year. I think his fiance Ashley, who is here with us, picked I think up she... $7,500. Yeah, <laughs> she, already, she already got half of it. <laughs> Let's take a look at some clips from earlier today. We've had practice so far and one round of qualifying. There's the 101 of Grant Holmes. And what we've seen a few different times, the header pipe comes out right there, oh. and it almost runs over it right through his back tire. It stays connected to the, uh, to Scotty, the silencer what part. What goes through your mind when something like that Man, drops? hopefully not your header pipe. Yeah, hopefully not your, your back tire running it over. But, you know, he's just ruining equipment, but you're trying to go out there and finish every lap. So you're thinking it doesn't sound right. But you don't necessarily can know that it's there, so you're just keeping it wide open until you see a black flag see, or a checkered head, flag. Expletives, just expletive, <laughs> expletive. What do I do? Yeah, well, and he wasn't the only one that had that problem. We saw also the uh, the 191 of Dustin Brown had the exact same issue. So I don't know if it's because it's so rough. I don't know if they worked on their motorcycles from last night. You forget to put a spring on that uh, header pipe, but it happened to a couple folks out there. Uh, that'd be a good question for for some of you guys when you get down in the pit area. Say, hey, what's going on with your header pipes? Are they just coming loose because it's rough? It's it's our second day of racing in a row. Maybe they didn't have time to completely go through their motorcycle after racing on the rough mile yesterday. So it could be a combination of things. But, uh, man, it's been wild and crazy so far. We got another clip of earlier today. Let's check it out. Oh, I've already seen this one. Tell me what you guys think about it. Uh-oh. Later. What was that? Actually, we interviewed Henry as soon yeah. as he got to the pit after that, and uh, one of his uh, mechanics came over and they're like, "Bud, you dropped your transponder." <laughs> he dropped he was it. Just more worried about getting the bike and getting some water. That right. guy was dripping. Right. So the, the transponder is zip-tied on the fork tube, and that's what they use for the timing and scoring when they go across the finish line. Evidently, the zip-tie broke, or it just got loose and it just fell off right there. Uh, if that did, happens during a race, you're not counted unless you've got the transponder. I mean, obviously, right. if this we, was the last lap, the transponder's off. Right. This is still going to be counted, but this is how you get your times. Right. And this the, is how you get your laps, everything. Timing and scoring is right next door. They they will notice something like that. If that if that bike rider doesn't come through, a, a blank line comes across, and then they'll look up there, and they'll have to manually put him in where he finished in whatever position he finished in. So, uh, yeah, you, just, uh, you don't want that to happen, but things do happen. Obviously, we've seen a lot of different things. Turtles, transponder, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh oh. Bears. Bears. There's <laughs> the a, bear. speaking of bear, the bears on the track. Corey Texter, this is the first round or second round of practice. And he just pulls up and he wants to watch the TV. I guess uh, he didn't like the view he had back it's in the pit area. It's a big screen. Like, if you think yeah. about how big that monitor is. So I, I couldn't figure out exactly what was going on here. The bike's running. He's sitting there twisting the throttle. So. I, I'm not sure about that. What do you think, Ricky? I think it was Kristen Beat. I think he, he saw Kristen Beat on yeah. the big screen. What Corey Texter is doing this season <laughs> is just great. I love to see Corey succeeding because Corey Texter is one of those riders that is so hard on himself. When things aren't exactly perfect, he's down and he's depressed and he's angry and he puts it all inward. And now Corey Texter is just on fire. And it's great to see Tex, uh, see Tex I, the I, bear. On fire. He's I think doing great. When people don't put him in the mix and don't include him in the story, I think that just fuels his fire. Um, he's been leading the points almost the whole season, and people still aren't you know, calling him the championship contender. He's stretching the points lead out. He's won three times this year. An Ooh, underdog, but he's a, a points leader. I'm beginning to wonder, though, 
Is that really true? Are people like, I understand like Dan Bromley, he also is like, people keep on ignoring me. But I don't think anybody really is ignoring you, Corey. I think we're all paying attention. I think we all think, look, you, you could be on a on an easy streak for, well, not easy, for another championship. You know, you've won what? This is his, he's won three it, races so far? Yeah, three races out of so the five. So I don't five. think anybody isn't giving him the respect. So, well, and he's, he's, he's maybe doing he just takes year. it all to heart. And, and also, he's got, I think what it also is, Cruz, his son, is now a social media giant. Oh, he's, a Man, yes. he's got more followers than I do, I think. Well, that's not yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's be Thanks honest. a lot, B. So does that turtle. Thanks a lot, B. <laughs> Anytime, yeah, Grandpa. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Just because I have a grand cat, Kristen, I mean, come on. There's, there's uh, Coy Texter getting that checkered flag last night, getting that victory lap, and that's got to be the best lap of the night, right? Yeah, real quick, let's talk a little bit just about next week, if you don't mind. Yes. Because everybody has been talking to me. Now, do you say, I have always thought it was always Lima. It is Lima. It is Lima. It's not Lima. No, Lima's in Peru. Okay. Lima's good, good, in good. Ohio. Then I got to change some flights really <laughs> quickly. <laughs> Here, get on your phone and start I was changing like, flights. This is international. Man, this is great. Why is my flight $1,500? Everybody $1, is talking about this track because we're talking about so much <laughs> change of services. And you're talking yes. about how the dirt here is like six inches d deep in certain places. Right. And there we're going to a peak sand. gravel. Yeah. Yeah, like like yep. when we get to get to Lima, this is peak gravel, correct? Peak gravel, These are little, like little rocks, little, almost like little pebbles. And I heard that the fans, I heard you people out there, are completely in, insane. So hi, Kristen. Look, Kristen's on camera. Hi, Kristen. Yeah, Kristen, where is, you been? Is, she is a, that. That's for people that don't know. Kristen Beat has her own compound that's got a grass <laughs> yard. If you look right to the left, there's a small jacuzzi, and there's people that are feeding her grapes and her horse. Right, right. Yeah, her Makeup horse. Artist. Her horse is down there too. Yeah. <laughs> She owns her own personal. So it's Rocky. Rocky's roaming around over here eating premium food. Did you How's it up in the booth? I heard you guys get, like, snacks sometimes. Sometimes. Turtles. Yeah, we, <laughs> had, we had some turtle legs for dinner last night. Just kidding. The turtle's back in the pond. Yeah, you know, I heard you guys talking about the roost, and it's so interesting. I walked out to talk with Shana Texter earlier, and something she said as I was walking out of her pit, she actually rolled up her sleeves, and she said, final note, the roost hurts, and I kind of looked at the inside of her arm and what she was showing me, and she actually had bruises and battle scars, and, and you could tell where she had just been pelted by these by these rocks and these pellets. And I mean, these guys are warriors out there; they're going to war. Just wait until next weekend when we're getting hit with the pelts uh, of a little gravel too. So, uh, question from the truck, Kristen Beach: Should we do this again next week? I this like it. I'm a big fan. Ricky Rackman, should we do this segment next week? Yeah, but Scotty, please wear pants next time we do this. Hey! I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no! You're not supposed to film no! it. <laughs> I wore shorts today. I'm in, I'm hey, in Oklahoma. Any, anytime there's, a, there's an opportunity, I can't go into Kristen Beat's compound. I am, you know, out there by the turtles. And Scotty's got this big air-conditioned suite here. So anytime I can hang Sweet. out with the real yeah. broadcasters, mm -hmm. it, it, it feels hey, really good. We also have another segment coming up a little bit later on that you filmed. Yesterday you were with Morgan Mitch today yes. who, who you got in your new little segment james rispoli that we now rocket. we now have a name for the segment let's hear it okay well you tell me because no, i don't know it's what a it segment is. That, here's what the plan is okay i love this sport and i also love the personalities of the sport and i want to try to bring that out and while you and Kristen are so great with all the storylines and so great with all the stats you know there there's there's people out there that are saying but does james rispoli shave his legs Okay, I don't they know. don't say, well he does. Is that really okay. something people are saying? No, that's not the point. <laughs> but I figured, you know what, I'm gonna take two chairs, okay. we're gonna sit them up, and we're gonna hang out with these riders and mm -hmm. we're gonna try to bring out the personalities. So we're gonna find because when I watch a sport, there's people that I like, mm -hmm. there's people that I don't like, there's people that you wanna know a little bit more about. And you guys are so great giving all the stats, and we're gonna bring out a little bit of the personalities of these riders, and we did one with Morgan Mischer that was great yesterday. He has more personality than you can imagine. Yes. And, uh, and today was James Rispoli, yeah. and we didn't have a name for the segment, but I believe it was your sister? Girlfriend. Girlfriend. Whatever. I mean, same, it's the same it thing. It is not we're the same Oklahoma. thing. Ricky. You better it back off. We're, we're in my hometown. You better be nice. <laughs> my but girlfriend. It's, it's now Cynthia. called. Uh -huh. what, what, so what's the name of it? Let's hear it. Between Two Turns. Between Two Turns. Ooh, like Ricky's that. new little okay. show. He hasn't done enough you know, with Headbangers Ball. He brought back the ball for a little bit. Now we got... Between well, you know what? Two turns. This is what happened. And I, I got a call from Facebook, and they said, <laughs> something's wrong with Facebook right now. We have had eight minutes without 1,100 people talking crap about you. Can you please do something on AFT? Because we got to get those people talking crap about you. Got to get the numbers you. up. So, so, yeah, so yeah. I decided, you know what? I need, to, I need to give you guys more hate because some of you people – you don't have anything else to do in your mother's basement. So I'm going to give you a segment <laughs> so you can talk smack about me on the Internet because I care. Right. And that's why we're live right here on your phone. That's right. Man.
Is that your guys' playback, Ricky's phone? Yes, and I, but I am, I'm really excited about the racing. I, I love, I, I'm just excited about this whole season. I, I really do love going to these uh, flat track races. Any t- if people follow me on social media, you know that I, I, I'll hyper because I'm so excited. The truth is I am a fan of the sport, and I love going to these races. I, I really do enjoy working with both of you a lot, and we have a good time. So if you guys see us having a good time, please understand this isn't it's fake. Real. We are really enjoying right. it. I yeah. love getting out there, talking to the race fans. Anytime you go to the race, I will be out there, and I love to hang out and find out the things that you like or don't like or stuff like that. Kristen, how much do you like coming to the flat track races? You know, when I started covering this series, it was just so approachable. And the riders are awesome. The storylines are awesome. The crew's awesome. So it's obviously fun. I actually love coming to the miles, especially because the racing is so good. They're going so fast. And it's just so unique and fun to follow. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. Ricky, get out of my office. Go back to the heat. We're going to get a commercial break taken care of. We got more qualifying coming up right here at the OKC Mile, right here in my hometown. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Live rangerously. In 2021, Royal Enfield celebrates 120 years of riding pure. The iconic brand will continue to pursue its efforts in the production twin class and the build train race program. After a successful first year campaign, Royal Enfield looks to improve on last year's effort. For more information, please visit royalenfield.com. Arai Helmet started racing in America in flat track, and we've been supporting it ever since. Arai, handcrafted with an obsessive dedication to rider protection. For more information, please visit our website, AraiAmericas.com. Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of Progressive American Flat Track. For decades, Progressive American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometa gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometa gasket, sealing championship since 1989. Tired of replacing your battery every year? It's time to buy the world's best lithium battery, the Pulse IPT. With up to 1,200 cranking amps and unmatched reliability, there's no better battery for your bike. Visit Full Spectrum Power in the paddock today or on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Start something. Power everything. Explore the full Indian motorcycle lineup, including the all-new redesigned FTR with 17-inch wheels and street-tuned suspension, or the new generation of a classic, the 2022 Indian Chief. For more info and to schedule a demo ride, visit IndianMotorcycle.com. Always wear a helmet, never drink and ride. KTM, ready to race. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at TorchEyewear.com and click on our free Home Try-On program. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you, too, can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com.
With over 300 World Championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core. From the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in Progressive American Flat Track, SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. We're the Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. We understand the challenges riders face every day. As riders, we want to share the road and be seen by motorists. Remaining visible is critical to our safety and well-being. That's why we work tirelessly to promote motorcycle safety and awareness. We're proud to support our community that includes riders of all stripes. If you've been injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS or visit lawtigers.com. The Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. And welcome back to the OKC Mile. It is the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City. OKC Mile 2 presented by Kicker Performance Audio. Speaking of Kicker, they're from Stillwater, Oklahoma. They're nearing their 50th anniversary of Living Loud. So stop by the Kicker booth down here out front on the front straightaway as you enter turn number one. And speaking of turn number one, the open pit area will be tonight from 7.30 to 8.30. If you want to meet your favorite rider, get some autographs. That's 7.30 to 8.30. Opening ceremony is at 6.20 p.m. tonight. This is Central Time Zone for you folks tuning in watching online and don't forget after opening ceremonies we are switching on over to nbc sports gold that is track pass on nbc sports gold right after opening ceremonies and also there's a lot going on underneath the grandstands ricky rackman caught up with charlie roberts to talk about the raffle they got going on right here this weekend here at the okc mile another thing you got to do is check out the rookies of 79 tent which happens to be in a nice air-conditioned area. And right now we're here with Charlie Roberts from the Rookie of 79. I talked to Charlie a lot. I think what they do is absolutely incredible for injured riders. And tell us real quick a little bit about the organization. Hey, Ricky, we came together in 2009 to make a difference to those injured in the sport. Myself and six other guys that were rookie experts in 1979 created the charity. And it's racers giving back to racers. And we're currently over $2 million in benevolence uh, since 2009. It's, it's really good, and it helps the injured riders. And every race, uh, they seem to be giving away some really, really cool stuff for raffles, and all the money goes to a really good cause. And before I tell you what we've got raff raffling off today, let me tell you, Charlie's going to tell us a little bit about the cause right now because it's, it's, it's really good, and it's something that hits home to here in OKC. Jeremy Warner uh, was a professional racer for American Flat Track, and two years ago at Atlanta, he was paralyzed. Uh, today, during the riders meeting, we actually showed the vehicle that we purchased for Jeremy. It's a brand new Chevy pickup truck that the side opens like a Lamborghini. So we've given him back his freedom. He needs a few other things in his life, working on his home to make it handicap accessible. So today, we're raffling this awesome picture of Jared Meese along with a factory Indian jersey signed by Brad Baker, Briar Bauman, and Jared Meese. And again, all the monies go to Jeremy Warner. One other thing, Ricky, you can go to rookie79.com, buy your tickets online if you're not here with us. You can get them from me walking around the grandstand, or you can come to the tent. Tammy also asked me to ask you guys, while you're on rookie79.com, you can actually go to and donate money to Jeremy Werner Fund, which will go directly to him and help him. So if you're here at the track, Charlie really likes it when people yell at him. So yell at him. And then give him some money. He's going to give you a raffle ticket. You might win this really cool autographed picture of Jared Meese. And like he said, this uh, Indian motorcycle jersey, Briar Bauman, Jared Meese, and Brad Baker have signed this. And again, if you're not here at the race today, definitely go to rookiesof79.com, buy your raffle ticket, because we're going to be giving this away today, right? Right before the Twins main event, we'll draw the winner. All right, thanks. 
Just a reminder for you folks that are here, the Rider Autograph Session has been moved tonight. It will be 7.30 until 8.30, so there's no need to stand in line just yet. We have opening ceremonies at 6.20, and then we'll get into our semifinals, and after our last semifinal will be the open pit area to you to, for you to go and meet your favorite rider. Stop by the souvenir stand, get the event t-shirt, get something to take down there to the pits. Let's talk about storylines coming into OKC mile number two. Let's talk Mission Super Twins first. Robinson, the man is determined. He fell off at Joliet with an injured right knee, came back and won here last night. So he has moved from fifth to the to second in the point standings. Also, Jared Meese, his win streak at the OKC Mile ended last night with a third place finish. And Breyer, Mr. Consistency is the key. Breyer Bauman still out front in the points lead of our Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycle. Let's switch gears. Let's go down to AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines Class. The storylines, Texter alone at the top. The kid is on fire right now. Three wins so far here in 2021. Cameron Smith got his best career finish last night with a second place finish. I told Ricky a second ago, I believe he was in shock when he was on the podium. Hopefully we can get a little better interview out of him a little bit later on tonight. And then Dan Bromley gets the respect, gets up there on the podium on that Yamaha. Dan Bromley up there, earning the respect of others with a podium finish here at the OKC Mile. And the last class, AFT Singles. How about this? Wiles winning by miles. Wiles definitely feeling it last night. Mikey Rush, his podium streak ended last night with a fourth place finish. He'd been on the podium at the first four rounds of the season. Dallas Daniels, strategery. Up there running up front every weekend. Doesn't have to win every race, but has to finish up there on the podium. And then Morgan Mischer into the mix. He ran second at Joliet. Got on the podium once again on his KTM last night. So Mischler always in the mix. He always finds the high line and makes it around the racetrack. Morgan Mischler also in the mix. That's our storylines coming into the OKC mile number two. It is actually round number six of the Progressive American Flat Track Series. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track, high above the finish line. Up next, we will have our first round of qualifying for our Mission Super Twins. That will be five laps. After that, AFT Production Twins qualifying round two, AFT Singles qualifying round number two, and then we'll come right back with our Mission Super Twins qualifying round number two. We'll take a quick break and then opening ceremonies at 6.20 p.m. out here at the OKC Mile. We're at the beautiful Remington Park. There are two ponds in the middle. There's a grass track in the middle. There's a huge big screen for the fans that are in attendance outside watching to pay attention to the races as the bikes are on the racetrack. Qualifying has begun for the Mission Super Twins. Briar Bauman on the one bike. Nine is Jared Meese. 20 is Jared Vandekoy. 27, Robbie Pearson. 36, Colby Carlisle. 37, Bronson Bauman. 43 is the Rocket, James Rispoli. 44 is Brandon Robinson, last night's winner. 67, Davis Fisher. 92, Brandon Price. And the 95, that's J.D. Beach. That's numerically how they're coming onto the racetrack. Not exactly how they are on the racetrack right now. Oh, some riders have their hands up already. Meese is one of the riders. Looks like Carlisle has his hands up as well. So a couple riders having issues putting their hands up. One, two, three, four riders off the pace in turn three and four. Here comes the green flag for the rest of the group. The front runners, they, they don't seem to mind. Everybody else has their hand up. Don't know what I see. I see a red flag. I don't know what is going on right here. It's hard to tell. The flag is waving red over there in turn four. There are wheeling red lights on uh, around the racetrack, and the red flag does come out, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. I didn't see anything from my point of view high on top of the finish line. There's Raymond Rizzo with the red flag. There are red wheeling lights around the entire racetrack. Race control is in about the room two doors down from me, so they flip on the red lights. It goes on all the way around the racetrack. We take those to every one of our rounds. The bikes are still circling around, so I'm not exactly sure what the problem is. We'll try to find out here at the OKC Mile. It might have been a little bit too wet. There's the 20 bike here on the screen. All right, so we're trying to figure out exactly what was going on. It, lit, it looked like the second group of riders just immediately when they got on turn two, they put their hands up, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we're trying to find out. There's uh, Dave McGrath on there on the right. J.D. Beach has pulled up already. Here comes the rest of the crew. We'll take a look at the replay, see if we can figure out what's going on. They'll try to stop everybody in the hot and cold box. So, so here they come into turns one and two. Nice green background behind them. It's a little bit slip right here. Second place ride was really sideways. I just don't see nothing. Meese puts his hand up right away. I don't think he's comfortable with the racetrack. I, I cannot see anything else, but Meese was off the, off the throttle right there. It might be a little bit too wet out there on top of the hard surface, which makes it like grease. 
or like putting water on your uh, kitchen floor and then sliding around out there or, or butter even just slipping around on your kitchen floor i don't i don't know it just looks like it may be too slick Vandekoid, they don't seem too concerned about it right now that's Vandekoy down there ben evans and the rest of the crew red flags are out all the way around the track we'll try to figure out exactly what's going on beautiful remington park We'll try to figure exactly what's going on. Kristen's going to go down there and try to get a report from us. There goes Dave Zanotti over there to talk to his rider. I see Jesse Janish, who is actually helping out Davis Fisher this weekend. Janish is uh, pretty much all done racing with us here in American Flat Track. Moved down to Florida, racing a lot of cross country. There's Dave Zanotti. I just spoke about him. That's Dave McGrath, the official with the headset on. They're trying to figure out exactly what's happening. Uh, the red wheel and lights just went off. That doesn't mean we're getting right back out there. That means uh, they're thinking it over. Meese now is talking to uh, Dave McGrath. Their bikes don't look like they're wet. The shields don't look like they're dirty. So it must be just really slick on the top level or the top layer of soil, especially over there in turn number two. Yeah, let's take let's take another look at the replay. See if we can see anything. This is right when they first came on the racetrack. Briar's out in front. Mies is the third bike out there. Gets it pretty crossed up. Goes up the racetrack. And then he just puts his hand up in there. So evidently he thought it was too too slick, I guess. That's the only thing I can figure out. I'm just speculating right now. I'm just kind of guessing uh, from way up here. It's kind of hard to tell. But the, uh, you know, it looked like the last group of riders, the first three or four riders, they didn't seem to have a problem with it. Look at Rispoli again having some head shake. But uh, Mies has his hand up. Here comes Price. Looks like Carlisle's off the pace. He's putting his hand down. Price put his hand out. So the guys at the back of the pack, the ones that seem to have the problem with it. So uh, not sure exactly what's going on other than it might be just a little bit too slick over there in turns one and two. Just got a, a message from the pit area. The Waters Auto Body team said Aiden Roos Evans is all done for the day. Mechanicals now on both motorcycles. I saw pictures of what happened to the primary bike yesterday. And now the backup motorcycle has given up the ghost. So uh, Aiden is all done for the day. Tough break for him. We will see him next weekend at the Ohio, uh, the Ohio National, which is the Lima, Ohio, half mile of the pea gravel. The old school uh, fairgrounds down there. Some really good racing. The track looks good from up here, but I'm a long ways away. Okay. So so the report from down there at the hot and cold box, there are puddles in turn number two. So there's some puddles of water in turn number two. I uh, looks like I don't see any equipment. All right, so uh, looks like they're firing them up. They're going to give them seven laps. So hopefully, I guess they're going to send them back out. Told them to be careful the first couple of laps. They're going to give them seven laps in this session. They're firing up the motorcycle. So I guess it was just a little bit too slick over there. We're going to try it once again. Yeah, seven laps for this group right here. Here they come rolling onto the racetrack. Let's go through the riders out there again. Briar Bauman is on the one. 20 is Vandekoy. 43 is James Rispoli. 37 is Bronson Bauman. The nine of Jared Meese. 27 is Bucks Pearson. 36, Colby Carlisle. 44 is Brandon Robinson. Last night's winner. 67, Davis Fisher. 92 is Brandon Price. And the 95, J.D. Beach. It looked like uh, the 92 of uh, Price just put his hand up. So, uh, again, he must not be feeling comfortable in their turn number two. They don't have to go out there. I mean, this is qualifying, their first round of qualifying. They're going to give them seven laps to uh, hopefully work in that turn number two. They're trying to put as much moisture on the racetrack as they can as B-Rock gets the drive. He goes by the 43. The 43 coming up the inside. They're three wide across the start finish line, a little bit deeper in the field. There's a look at Briar Bauman on the number one bike. He's up in the deep stuff, high, wide, and handsome. And Rispoli right there in the thick of things. Almost gets ran over by the 37. Rispoli caught a whole bunch of roost, and he's off the pace off a of turn or two. That roost got him really good. Now he's trying to get it back up to full speed. They'll take him down the back straight away. Rispoli definitely off the pace going into turn three right now. There is Bronson Bauman. He's not scared to wick it up. He's at the top spot. The times have not updated. It says five minutes, 37 seconds. <laughs> They'll have to work on that. That might have included the red flag stop. <laughs> 92 of Price across the start finish line. Now Briar with the 40.526. Briar 40.117. Now the times are updated. Price goes up to the third position again. They're going to give him seven laps just because the track was a little bit too wet over there in turn number two. 
Doesn't seem to be slowing anybody down right now, though, unless you get behind somebody. I believe that's what happened to the 43 bike over Spoli. Uh, got in all of that uh, roost over there in Terminator 2. He says, hey, I'm going to let those guys go. I'm going to go out here by myself and see what I can do. Breyer out front on the one bike. He's on the top of right of the... Uh, He's on top of the speed charts right now, 40.117. Briar Bauman's starting to slow down now. And now he's, man, I don't know what's going on, Briar. Now he goes, grabs a handful. I don't know. There's, I think they're just a little strategy. They're playing around with each other right now. Turn one is a little bit rough is what we're hearing. There you go, grabbing a seat off of the track. Maybe that's what Briar lost going in turn one. Briar Bowman out there on the one, number one bike. Looks like his seat is on, but somebody hit a, a, a chuck hole going into turn one, lost their seat cushion at least. Briar out front behind him, the second place riders closing the gap. Again, this is qualifying. They're racing against the clock. Down the back chute, one. Briar, 44 is Robinson, last night's winner. Just qualifying the first round for the Mission Super Twins. There's the 9-2 Brandon Price. Price up there to second. On the front straightaway, Briar Bauman. This is qualifying. They gave him a couple of extra laps. They gave him six laps. So the uh, we're just about done with this first round of qualifying action here in the Mission Super Twins. Again, fighting the sun, fighting the wind. They're trying to put as much water on the racetrack as they can. Briar Bauman all over the motorcycle coming off of turn number two. And notice right there in that shot, you can see his foot was straight and flat, but you can see that brake pedal was way down there. So it makes it hard for him to reach up there and push that brake pedal down. So they're trying to keep it away from his toe. Uh, not sure if they're using the hand brake. He's got a little thumb brake they put on the motorcycle before the Atlanta Super TT. Hard to see it from where I'm at. I didn't go by the uh, pit area of Briar Bauman earlier today, so uh, he's still running the high line. Brandon Robinson trying the bottom of the racetrack right now. Now's the time to do it right now when it's qualifying only. But you also want to qualify as, as good as you can because the, the better you qualify will put you in a good starting spot for your semifinal. We'll take the top two out of the semifinals into that mission challenge, which pays $5,000 to win. Too fast, too tasty. Last lap, Super Twins qualifying round number one on the track. Up next, Production Twins qualifying round number two is next. There's Breyer across the start finish line. Top spot for Bauman. Jared Meese was quickest in practice, but he's back here in fifth. So the track is faster than one is in practice number two, but not as fast as it was in practice number one. So your top qualifier is the number one bike. Right there he is, Briar Bauman, 40.117. Brandon Price is second, 40.370. Jared Vandekoy is third, 40.502. Brandon Robinson is fourth, 40.526. Jared Meese is fifth. Davis Fisher is looking at down at his motorcycle. We believe he might be the one that lost his seat. He's stopping over here on the back straightaway. He's actually looking for some parts. I think he's, <laughs> nope, now he reaches down and grabs something else. So maybe grab the turtle. <laughs> Fisher lost something on his motorcycle. He stopped by and grabbed it. Take a, a replay right here. There goes Dave McGrath running out there onto the racetrack. I thought that was the seat. It is a side number plate from Fisher. Okay, that is the 67 plate, but that's the side number plate that goes over the pipes. And Fisher stopped on, on the turn number two to grab some more pieces off that motorcycle. So uh, might be having a yard sale a little bit later on. All over the racetrack. Breyer with the top spot right now, 40.117. That was their first round of qualifying. Up next, there's Breyer, top spot. J Brandon Price is second. Jared Vandekoy third. Robinson is fourth. Meese is fifth, who is fastest in practice. Rispoli up there, sixth on the Hartley-Davidson. J.D. Beach, Robbie Pearson, Colby Carlisle, Bronson Bauman, and Davis Fisher 
That's your top 11. Up next, your final round of qualifying for the production twins. Here they come onto the racetrack. 65, Corey Texer, 62, Dan Bromley, 79, Dalton Gauthier, 49, Chad Coast on that borrowed motorcycle. 25 is Ben Lau, 68, Ryan Varnes, 44, Cam Smith, 64, Danny Eslick from Tulsa. McAllister having an issue getting onto the motorcycle racetrack. Onto the racetrack. 64, Danny Eslick, 42, Jeremiah Duffy was quick time yesterday. 31 is Bell, 71, Pat Buchanan. 50, Jimmy McAllister is going to get a push back to the pit area. 161, Casey Sisko. 223, Jeffrey Lowry. 276, Brian LaFelt. 15, Gary Ketchum, also from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the 90, Brandon Newman out here on his birthday. He has not finished practice or qualifying yet today. So he's borrowed a motorcycle, I believe. I'm not sure whose bike it is. But Newman out there giving it a go in the production twins class. of practice actually qualifying for the production twins CTEX out in front the only clean motorcycle in the production twins class yesterday I don't think he was passed by one single bike we saw him earlier when Ricky was up here in my booth and Kristen was down there in her suite outside the outside suite the uh, we we're talking about Corey. He stopped and watched one round of practice right there in front of the big screen here at Remington Park. So uh, the bike was still running, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on. Looks like Jimmy McAllister just joined the racetrack. The 50 bike that got it started. There he is. Corey Texter is catching up to him right now. There's the 79. Dalton Gautier. Look who's up on top. Dan the man. Dan Bromley goes to the top spot. Bromley is up there. Now Barnes goes to the top spot. 4-1.715. Barnes, Bromley, Duffy now picking up the pace on the 42 bike, our quick time of yesterday. Corey Texter, the 65 bike, where's he at? Currently seven. So maybe they're trying something. Maybe he's just not pushing it too hard. Corey Texter, 65. Dalton Gautier is on the 79. There's Jimmy McAllister. We'll take a look back. There's the 25 of Ben Lau. The Oklahoma rider, Danny Eslick. Pat Buchanan, the 71, was up there for a while. He's up to fourth on his Harley Davidson. Barry Smith is his mechanic. That's Brian Smith's dad. Pat Buchanan from Michigan. Used to be national number 75. And Barnes right there. We talked about him earlier as well. Got a monkey on his back right now. Has had a bunch of bad luck. He's usually running up front when that bad luck does happen, though. So Barnes trying to recover and try to finish up the race. Corey Texter's got his hands full right now with Dalton Gautier as they come onto the front straightaway. Gautier tucks into the draft. He swings up the inside. Nice draft pass right there. And it looked like Corey Texter just chopped the throttle. That's the white flag. One more lap to go. Checker flag will be coming out next time by. The white flag is out now. Newman stops again. So Newman comes up short once again in this round. There's Cam Smith coming to the white flag. Now Newman gets out of the way. White flag for the 15 of Ketchum. And now it should be the checkered flag for the next rider coming off of turn number four onto the front straightaway here at the Remington Park. There's Gautier taking that checkered flag. Gautier up there in the third position on his Harley Davidson with help from Boswell Harley Davidson. Bromley, 40.999 on the number 62 bike. Where's Chad Coase? I don't see him out there, so Chad did, elected not to go out here in this second round of qualifying. I think that's a good move. Save what you got. You're on a borrowed motorcycle. You might as well save it and try to make it throughout the day on that borrowed motorcycle. So second round, 62. Dan Bromley is the top spot for 0 0.999. Ryan Varnes, second on the 68 bike, 4.1.533. Dalton Gautier is third, 41.758. Jeremiah Duffy on the 42 bike is fourth, 41.961. Pat Buchanan is fifth. Jeffrey Lowry, Corey Texter, last night's winner. Our points leader is way down there in seventh right now. I don't think they're too worried about it. When it's go time, they'll definitely pick up the pace. That was your production twins' final round of qualifying. Up next will be your AFT singles, their final round of qualifying. After that, we'll have our super twins.
All right, so I just heard that we're going to put some two. We're going to put two laps of water onto the racetrack. Hope everybody's having a great time. And speaking of water, please drink plenty of water out here today. It's very hot outside in this Oklahoma heat. You might not be feeling it right now, but please be sure and drink plenty of fluids. Underneath the grandstands, you can go on inside, check the souvenir stand. They got the rookie class 79 booth, the Oklahoma City Indian Oklahoma City booth is down there. And now we're going to go down to that podium. I see my cohorts are down there, but they've got some extra materials on them what are you guys doing well you know scotty we were talking about the bucking <laughs> that was not graceful a buck and bronco earlier in the day <laughs> you're just shaking my head I, <laughs> I lost the mic because it's over here at least my mic is on <laughs> hello hey everybody how you guys doing tonight today that was cute we wow tried. that was absolutely <laughs> pathetic let's just check one more time how are y'all feeling out there Maybe it's you have more power than I do. I want to tell everybody that the uh, fan walk, for those of you people that are here at the track today, the fan walk was postponed to be at 8 o'clock, I believe, or 7 o'clock. Can you we can get a walk confirmation around. on that? 7.30. Thank you, Scotty Duba, the You're voice welcome. of, like, like a god almost, not sort of like one. So anyways, you guys can go walk around. All the riders out there, and I will tell you this right now. We know how things have been for the last year and a half. Right now, it is so great to see so many of you here at the track. And to see your faces. Some smiling. of their faces. Some of your faces looked a little bit better with masks, but, but mo not most <laughs> of you. But right now, if you're going to be doing the fan walk at about 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. all the riders are out there. It's the first time in a year and a half that the riders have had the opportunity to go out there and meet fans. So they're signing autographs. Some have got some really cool rider shirts. And it's just really cool. And I just want to say thanks to all of you for showing up. And it's so good to see people in stands for American flat track racing. And speaking of the riders, we're not just wearing these for fun. Uh, every track we go to, they curate, they create uh, these incredible trophies and mementos from the racing. Tonight, the winners, top, uh, the winners, second and third in every class gets to take home these awesome cowboy hats, which I'm sporting right now. I'm sorry and whoever gets this later. And the trophy looks pretty rad this year. It is absolutely so cool. You touch it because I could break it. <laughs> so check it out. It's actually a horseshoe for the OK. Can you you want to help me with that? That's a rather happy. Um, this is actually a horseshoe for the OKC Mile. So cool. One of the horse tracks we go to on the schedule this year. Scotty, what are the other horse tracks we go to? Well, Sacramento was a horse track. I don't know if they still run horses out there. Uh, Indianapolis, they raced horses there a long time ago, I believe. Uh, that might be the only two left on the circuit right now. And it really does produce some of the best racing that we see all season long. These tracks, each unique, each special in their own way. This track, a rider's track, Ricky, we've talked to a lot of the riders uh, throughout the day and throughout the weekend, and it seems as though this track in particular of all the miles, it's not a chess match mile like Springfield or uh, like some of the other miles we've seen before. But... Uh, it's definitely one of those miles where the riders have to exhibit more finesse, more technical racing. It's not only that. Whatever you saw last night is not going to be what we're going to see tonight. The track right. conditions are always changing. You saw the guys stop for a little bit because maybe there was a little bit too much moisture. It's not as windy as it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So the track conditions are constantly chase, changing. And every time the riders get out there, they've got to adapt to whatever the track gives them. And like you've been saying the whole time, this track, the OKC Mile, gets really rough. It's a rodeo out there. Scotty? I would definitely agree. It looks like it's pretty rough, but it's not as rough as last night. They've done a lot of work to it. It's getting faster. Uh, it's getting better as the water truck just now pulls off. I'm jealous because I didn't get a cowboy hat, but uh, I don't think it fit underneath my headphones anyway. So bikes are pulling onto the racetrack. It is time for our last round of qualifying for the AFT singles. We have three groups. The one bike, Dallas Daniels, 15 is Mikey Rush, 18, Max Whale, 52, Shayna Texter Bauman, 13 is Morgan Mishler, 17 is Henry Wiles, 105, Brandon Kitchen, 48, Trent Lowe, 21, hard to believe, but he is here. That's Trevor Bruner, 51, Cole Zabala, the 38th, that's the Dean Machine, Tanner Dean. The time to beat for qualifying round number one is the 17 by Henry Wiles, 42.218. Mission Super Twins qualifying round number two will come up in just a moment. Opening ceremonies at 6.20, race fans, 6.20 p.m. Central, if you're tuning in all over. And after opening ceremonies, we'll switch on over to Track Pass. Mikey Rush, Dallas Daniels among the Estenson Yamahas out in front. 
their final chance to qualify. You got to get a good qualifying spot to put on yourself on the front row if you can in your semifinal, make it a little bit easier on you. Max Whale well off of the pace, coasting across the finish line, the factory Red Bull KTM. And here comes the 15 leading the fray down the front straightaway. Rush, Daniels, Kitchen on the 105, 48, Trent Lowe. Looks like Tanner Dean is up there. There's Max Whale well off the pace, sitting on the inside of the front straightaway. So like he'll have to rely on the times from that first round. Kitchen's got his hands full with the 48. Trent Lowe goes on by. The Wally Brown Racing Rowdy Energy 48 by gets on by. The 105 of Brandon Kitchen. Kitchen was running the high line earlier today. Let's see if he goes back to the high line. Yes, he does down here in three and four. Take a look at Henry Wiles on the top spot again. 42.043. That's the quickest lap of the day in the production um, inside the NAFT singles class. Wiles laid down the fastest lap last time by 42.043. Wiles right there on the racetrack. Here he comes going by Shana Texter Bauman. Now he'll set his sights on the riders in front of him. That will be his teammates, Zabala and Bruner. This is our last round of qualifying. It's Wiles. The quick time so far, 41.975. That is definitely faster than the first round. The last lap was the fastest lap for him. Fastest lap we have seen in the singles class. It's Wiles. Trevor Bruner, his teammate, up there in second on the 21 bike. Brandon Kitchen, 105, is third quick so far in this second round of qualifying. Wow, Wiles using every look how crossed up he is down here in turns three and four. Leaders across the start finish line. White flag is out. Mikey Rush leads him. Dallas Daniels goes to the high side going into one. 105, Brandon Kitchen gets by the 48 of low going into turn number one. 17 of Wiles having a good time out here in Oklahoma City, trying to go back-to-back -back mile wins. His teammates are right here on the screen, the 21 and the 51. Trevor Bruner had the wild get off last night, was cleared by the doctors. They did a check on his concussion test down there, and he is passed with flying color, so he gets to come out here and race again. That is Bruner on the 21 bike on the screen. He's currently second, 4.2.235. Behind him is Zabala. Behind those two is the number 17 of the hammer, Henry Wiles. This time out, the checkered flag will fly as Dallas Daniels drafts by his teammate across the start finish line. Here comes the Turner Honda's 21, 51, and the 17. And Shana Texter Bauman back here at the back of the pack with a 43.902, her fastest lap so far in this final round of qualifying. So it's the 17 bike still on top, 4-1. 0.975, that is faster than the first round of qualifying. So it's Wiles looking good, trying to go two for two at the OKC mile here in 2021. The hammer, Henry Wiles on the 17 bike. Group number two sitting down there in the holding pin. 99 is Stallings, 19 is James Ott, 143 Cody Cop, 94 is Ryan Wells. 26 is a scratch for the day, that's Aiden Roos Evans. He's all done has broken both of his motorcycles. Tough break for the Waters Auto Body team. After that, 11, Andrew Luker, 124, Hunter Bauer. Then you got 161, Casey Sisko, 55, Tyler Raggio, 191, Dustin Brown, the Canadian rider that made his AFT debut yesterday will come out. And uh, remember, he had his header pipe come off in his first round of qualifying. Let's see if he can recover from that. I don't know if that's a particular pipe, uh, particular part you might have a spare of. So. Uh, Maybe he has one he can take off his backup bike. We'll have to see. Bikes are set to go. Group number two is up next of our AFT singles. Three groups, 31 riders making the, the call here today. The time to beat, 41.975. So the track got a little bit faster for the AFT singles. The fast lap in the first round was a 42.218. So now the singles are in the 41 second range. Just one bike is, and it's Henry Wiles. Group two rolls onto the track. Three folks just joining us. We're in our final round of qualifying. This is AFT singles, two more groups of them, and then we'll have one more qualifying session for the Mission Super Twins. Opening ceremonies at 6.20 p.m. out here Central Standard Time. The open paddock area has been moved until a little bit later on after our last semifinal at 7.30. We'll have an open paddock for one hour. You can go to the pits, meet your favorite rider, get some autographs after their semifinals and before the Mission Challenge. Here's a big group of riders coming off of turn number four. 124 Bauer leading that group of them. 
Here comes a swing pass up the inside, the 191. That's Dustin Brown going up the inside. The two Canadians up there side by side, 124 and the 191. 191, Dustin Brown, a two-time Canadian champ. It's good to see him making his effort and coming on down here to race with American Flat Track. Hunter Bauer is his first year with us as well, the NKR Canada team who has teamed up with the Waters Auto Body. They're chasing the 19 of James Ott from Simi Valley, California. These kids sure don't look like it's their first time on a mile. Uh, they look right at home. They look really comfortable. 19 is going to lead him across the start finish line. Look who's in tow right now. The 124 is going to try to catch the draft, go up the inside. He's trying to make the pass, doesn't quite have the drive. Watch out, just about gets into the back tire of the 19. That will carry the momentum up the racetrack. He'll lose a little bit of time. He might be able to square up the corners. We take a look at the 11 bike of Luker. Going high, dropping low, coming off of turn number two. Onto the back chute. Luker up there fourth on the racetrack. Hunter Bowers up to third on the times right now, 42.479 for the 124 by Dustin Brown back there in eighth, the 191. Cody Kopp now in the 12th position, the 143. Those are some of the bikes that are on the racetrack. Andrew Luker now 14th after that last lap of 43.494, his fastest lap of this round. Bauer's going to try the draft pass on the outside this time going into turn one, so he's going to try a little different, going in high. He's trying to bring it down right now, square up the corner. Drop it down, Hunter, drop it down. And he couldn't because Ott was right there. He still gets the drive. He'll pass him coming off the corner, but now it looks like Ott has the better drive up the inside. It's a drag race down the back straightaway. We call that a shutoff contest going into turn number three. Bauer at the top spot now in this group. And he's the fastest on the track right now, 42.479. This actually might be a good lap for him unless those two were side by side too long and it slowed him down, but uh, looks like that's a solid lap for the 124. Here he comes to the white flag. Last lap of this second group of second round of qualifying. It looked like a really solid lap for the 124. Last lap was a 42.770. Not quite his quickest. His quickest so far is a 42.479 in the second round. Now there's nobody in front of him, so he doesn't have anybody to chase, but he also doesn't have any roost of the bike in front of him. Look at the head shake. Uh, the handlebar shaking in the hands of the 19 of James Ott right there coming off of turn number two. Hunter Bauer. Looking smooth down here in turns three and four, missing some of those bumps. Go tuck in right about here, start drafting. The left hand comes off the handlebar, tucks in behind the plastic. Raymond Rizzo, our racing champion, will wave the checkered flag. That's going to be it for group number two as they take the checkered. Hunter Bauer, see how quick that lap was. After updates up here on the timing scoring screen. Last time it was a 42.741. I believe that's ex about exactly what he has again this time. But a uh, good solid run for Hunter Bauer. Puts him in the third spot right now. In this second round, they'll take the fastest lap from round one and the fastest lap from round two. That'll qualify all these riders into two semifinals. One more group to go of the AFT singles. Quick time right now is still 41.975. As some of these riders are going to stop on the back straight, we do a little practice start. There goes Luker, and there goes the 19 of Ott. Wow, still in the top spot, 41.975. Bruner second, his teammate, Hunter Bauer, just on the track. He is third right now, just about a half a second behind the quick time. Kitchen is third. Ott is back here at sixth. J Trent Lowe is in fifth, skipped over him. One more group to go of the AFT singles, 175, Taryn Santero, 135, Ezra Brusky, 298, Trent Pickle, 243, that is Jared Lowe, 109, Billy Ross, 156, Jordan Jean, 101, Grant Holmes, 121, Jacob Cassio on the borrowed motorcycle, that's one of Tyler Raggio's bikes, and the 133, David Wigan, 182, Travis Petten, the fourth. Those are the riders getting set to come onto the racetrack. This is our last group of qualifying for the AFT singles. Mission Super Twins qualifying final round is up next right here at the OKC mile number two. Here comes your final group. Looks at Lowe wants to get out there and lead this time. He says, I don't want to be back here in the traffic. Lowe goes to the outside, see if he can lead off of turn number two. Now he gets way out of the way. So I thought Trent Lowe was, I'm sorry, Jared Lowe was getting out there to get in front of everybody. Now he gets in line, so maybe he wants to work with somebody. Maybe that was part of a plan. Usually two bikes are faster than one, but that's also when you're not in the roost of the bike in front of you. Jordan Jean, he reaches up with his left hand. He puts it on his number plate and, and hangs on to that. Some people put on their fork too. 
Yeah, 101 is the, one of the riders that had the exhaust coming off in that last round. He looks like he's pretty strong out there. That's Grant Holmes on his Suzuki. He's a Cal, uh, California rider. Grant Holmes, it's a Suzuki. Only the second Suzuki out here in this class. Battle for the top spot. One bike drop to the bottom of the racetrack. That's the 135. Ezra Brusky from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And off of turn number four, down the back shoot, 182. That's Travis Petten out in front. So Petten was scheduled to come to the racetrack last, but they were all uh, mixing it up coming to the line. Or coming onto the track, I should say. 182's Petten is out front. Picked up the green flag last time by, so this, this will be their first lap in this final round of qualifying out here at Remington Park. Is the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City, OKC Mile. Presented by Kicker Performance Audio. It's good to have the folks from Kicker out here enjoying the racing action. Up the inside goes the 135 of Rusky. Lowe's right beside him. Up to the high side goes the 175 of uh, Taryn Santero. They're three wide, just a little bit back behind the leader. The leader is 182, Travis Petten, his rookie year as a pro here with American Flat Track. Grant Holmes behind him, the 101. There's the 156 of Jordan Jean. As the rest of the bikes get down the back shoot. 109, Billy Ross is the second quickest in this group right now. The 109 from Michigan, he's up there in the 17th spot. Travis Petten, the leader up there in 14th. So I think it did him some good to get out in front of this group. I think uh, that's helping Travis Petten. We got a clear racetrack here. Obviously, you have no dust, but more importantly, you don't have any roost coming and flying off the rear tire in front of you, slowing you down a little bit. So uh, it's good to see Petten up there, currently in the 14th spot. Grant Holmes, the Suzuki, moves into 15th on that lap. That was his fastest lap. Jared Lowe moves into 17th. Travis. 243, Jared Lowe is in the 17th spot. 43.436. That's Trent Lowe's little brother. He goes up the inside of one of his competitors down here at the far end of the racetrack, turn three and four. Yeah, we got Lowe's and Lowe's racing with us. It's spelled exactly the same. In the singles class, they are Lowe's. In the production twins, it is Lau as the white flag comes out from our uh, assistant flag man. That's Raymond Rizzo, one of the nicest people in the paddock area, the pit area, whatever you want to call it. The racing chaplain as our uh, official flag man is putting the stripes down for the start of the racing action, which is coming up real soon. Actually, that's after uh, opening ceremonies. Opening ceremonies at 6.20 p.m. Look at them. Look at that Suzuki bounce through that bounce going, or those bumps going into turn three. Grant Holmes sneaking up the inside. These are two California kids. They raced each other all over the place in California. And now the Grant Holmes takes that 101 to the front. That looked like a clean lap right there. He gets by Petten. Now Petten swings up the inside. It looked like a good, solid lap for the uh, 101. Grant Holmes, 43.318. That was his fastest lap of the group right there. Uh, or, uh, for him, his last lap was his fastest lap, 43.318. Travis Petten was a little bit faster a few laps ago with a 43.264. That is going to be it for our singles qualifying. Unofficially, it is the 17 bike of Henry Wiles with a 41.975, your fast qualifier. We have one more group of qualifying out here today, and then we will get ready for opening ceremonies at 6.20 p.m. But up next, we have one more group. It is the Mission Super Twins final round of qualifying. That is what is next. Coming to the racetrack here real soon. All right, up next, the final round of qualifying. It is the Mission Super Twins. 11 bikes, Brian Smith is a scratch. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Just got a text message from Brian Smith. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Final group, it is the Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycles. Number one will lead them out. Briar Bowman, 44. Brandon Robinson, nine. Jared Meese, 20. Jared Bandicoy, the 95 J.D. Beach, 37 Bronson Bauman, 36 Colby Carlisle, 92 is Brandon Price, 67 Davis Fisher, 27 Bugs Pearson, 43 is James the Rocket Rispoli, 
the time to beat right now. Qualifying round number one, it was Breyer with the 4.0.117. We'll see if anybody can beat that time. They haven't sent them out yet. I don't know if they're looking for something on the racetrack. Looks, looks green from up here. Here they come. Last group of qualifying right here. After this, we'll have a break, and we'll have opening ceremonies at 6.20. The rider autograph session is 7.30 till 8.30 tonight. So we're going to have a little bit of a break after this one. They're getting up to speed. Exiting turn number two onto the back straightaway. Van de Koy out in front on the 20 bike. Here comes the 44 of Robinson sneaking a peek up the inside of the 43 of Rispoli. Spoli on the only Harley Davidson out there. Doing it for latest. There's the 20 bike. Coming off the turn number four, his teammate right behind him. The 20 bike and the 44 on the same team. Mission Foods, Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas. Rispoli behind him. Here comes Meese up the inside on the number nine bike, trying to get by Rispoli. A white dust when the when they're on the inside of the racetrack when they're kicking up the dust it's a very fine white dust when they're up in the deep stuff it's a little bit darker so it must be a little bit sandier up in the higher line down on the low line it's a little bit uh, of a white dirt kind of a kind of a Daytona Beach colored white sandy dirt. There's Van Coy, his good buddy, his teammate right behind him, the 44 of Robinson, last night's winner. Gonna bring him off a of turn number four, coming back this way. This is their final round of qualifying. Coming into yesterday, Van Dequay, two second place finishes in a row. The Atlanta Super TT and the Joliet Half Mile finished just off the podium yesterday with a fourth place finish. Meese trying to track him down. There's Breyer off the pace, coasting down the front straightaways, taking a look back. He's watching the screen. Whoa, Robinson just about comes off the seat. Breyer's going to take the number one bike back to the pit area, back to Michelle DeSalvo and Dave Z, Dave Zanotti, the uh, tuner on that motorcycle. Here comes 44 out in front. Brandon Robinson will lead the freight train on the front straightaway. Robinson in front of his good buddy, the 20 of Van Decoy. Robinson in the top spot, 40.439. Track about three tenths slower than it was last time they were out. Just about done with qualifying out here at the OKC Mile. White flag will fly. Next time by is Meese is getting by the 20 bike of Van Coy. Robinson will lead him off of turn number four to the white flag. One lap to go in this final session of qualifying. Big gap back to about four riders running together. The Estes and Yamaha teammates are running 95 and 36 running together. Actually, almost looked like something was in the front wheel of the 36 bike when he went by here. Kind of, we of a weird shot right here. See if you can see it when they go by this way. Hmm. Optical illusion. Down the back chute. Last lap of qualifying out here at the OKC Mile. Leader is in turn number four right now. 44, Robinson, but Mies is at the top spot. Meese is quickest in this round, so the nine of Meese moves into the top spot after that last lap. We'll see if Robinson can beat that lap. Meese was tracking him down, though. Meese will have a 4 0 0.359. This final round of qualifying. When it's race time, they changed up a little bit. There's the 36 of Car Carlisle. I swear something was in that front wheel. Might have just been some loose dirt, but it looked like something was hanging off that front wheel somehow. That's the checkered flag. That is it for qualifying race fans. Meese, your top top spot here in this second round of qualifying. Briar was fastest in the first round, pulled off with a, a lap and a half to go. So uh, Briar took it back to the pit area early in this session. He'll rely on his times from round number one. Either wasn't feeling it or wanted to save what he had for our semifinals. That is it for the action on the track until 6.30. At 6.20, we'll have our opening ceremonies. Now is a great time to stretch your legs, grab yourself something to eat or drink. Stop by the American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. They get the event shirts in two different colors. They've got the Indian red, and they've got the black shirts, the OKC Mile shirts. I like it how all these riders look up at the scoreboard as they go on by. They want to see if the times are up there. I love that. Might as well use what you can. 
We're here at the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City, OKC Mile 2, presented by Kicker Performance Audio. Again, for you folks that were expecting the open paddock area, we're still doing that a little bit later on. The rider autograph session today is 7.30 till 8.30 p.m. You'll have to go on down the front straightaway at that time, go past the Kicker Performance Audio booth, go past the white Mission tent, go into the pits. Just a reminder, a little bit later on when we do that, no alcohol is allowed in the pits until after the races. So... That's all the on-track action until 6.30. Opening ceremony is coming up at 6.20 p.m. here tonight. It's short and it's sweet. 6.20 to 6.30 is opening ceremonies. And then we will get into our first semifinal. The rest of the night looks like this. Two Mission Super Twin semifinals. Production Twins semifinals. AFT Single semifinals. Rider autograph session. Uh-oh, we got a new fan on the track. Is that the guy that came with Is Was he here last night? Turtle number two is on the racetrack. He wants to get his qualifying lap in. I wonder if that's the same guy. He just wants to race. Can we just let him race? I know when I was a kid, we'd catch turtles uh, when we were crossing the road. And we'd always uh, put numbers on them. He's, he's out of here. He's, he's, well, he's going to get a T-shirt. That's what he's doing. He's going to get a souvenir T-shirt, and then he's going to go back to his house down there in the pond. Turtle number two is leaving the building, folks. All right. We're going to take a commercial break. No more on action track until 6.30. Opening ceremony is coming up at 6.20 at the LKC Mile. job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people who do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. has turned out AJ it is incredible they can run high low middle anywhere they want we're talking eight riders in contention for this right now looking for more power E3 spark plugs deliver more power, better fuel efficiency, and reduced emissions. The secret is in the patented diamond-shaped ground electrode that promotes a more complete burn of the fuel. Proven on the dyno and on the racetrack, the official spark plug of American Flat Track helps power champions on two wheels and four. Winners run E3. What are you running? Falcon Tires is proud to be the official light truck tire of Progressive American Flat Track. Choosing the right tire for your truck or SUV is critical. And Falcon has you covered offering highway terrains to all terrains through torture-tested mud terrains. For more information on Falcon's full line of Wild Peak products, please visit us at www.falcontire.com. Tired of replacing your battery every year? It's time to buy the world's best lithium battery, the Pulse IPT. With up to 1,200 cranking amps and unmatched reliability, there's no better battery for your bike. Visit Full Spectrum Power in the paddock today or on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Start something. Power everything. Honda's all-new Talon 1000 X4, the official sport side-by-side -side of American flat track and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1,000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. SBS is your single source for brake parts and components. From pads to rotors, shoes, and other important parts covering motorcycles, scooters, motocross bikes, ATVs, and UTVs. We create the power to stop you so you can go ahead. 
Find the right parts for your bike at www.sbsbrakes.com. Sideburn is the world's finest go fast turn left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit sideburnmagazine.com. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Wheeland designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheeland product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheeland is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high-action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you, too, can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high-performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. We're hanging out here with James Raspoli. We're here in Oklahoma City. I got to ask you a couple questions. So this whole COVID thing has been tough on a lot of people. And you have a girlfriend. Why did you roll your eyes? Do you not no, want no, to no, talk no, about no, no, do it, do it, roll it. I mean, from what I heard, I'll ask you later, show me pictures, but I hear like you've got like the most smoking girlfriend. <laughs> That's not disrespectful, no, is it? No, no. But you should be very proud. But she lives in another country and with COVID, you can't just like, what country does your girlfriend live in? So she, yeah, she's from the Netherlands. Um, yeah, COVID's really kind of hurt that whole program. I mean, right it, now, before, let me just interrupt. We're, we're downplaying it because it's really messed up for us to say, COVID's really hurt the program. You can't talk to your girlfriend when so many people are dying from yeah, it. Yeah, and but, like there's so many people out of jobs and right, stuff like so that. So we're not belittling that, no. what we're talking about. You know, it's it's tough one, right? So when I lived in Europe, I lived there for five years. I met her, I think, three years ago. I'll probably get smoked for that answer. But, um, you know, I met her three years ago when I lived there. It was super easy. I lived in England. She was in the Netherlands. So it was an hour flight, you know. And then when I first came back, it was super easy. She could come fly over any time. It was no big deal. I could go there. And then when COVID hit, you know, they shut all the borders to try to obviously get rid of it all and all that jazz. And it's kind of just stayed and it's been hard the last six months because they opened up when I, I could go there, but she still can't come here. And it's kind of caused a little, like, it's, uh, you know, it's just hard. It's not causing anything, but it's just harder, you know, with the long-distance relationship, especially because, you know, racing is kind of, it's every weekend, and you roll off the gas. They're not rolling off the gas. It's like we've got to go 24-7, so it's very difficult. Like, I can't just go and fly over there without losing the training program, the testing, the this, the that, and with the season now in full swing, it's kind of it's kind of hurt my odds of going over there. We tried to, to do a little, a um, you know, meet in Mexico and stuff like that, and it just qu didn't quite work out with the testing and all that, and then, the, you know, having to quarantine, and if you did pop, it's 14 days, and it's it's a nightmare. Yeah, you can't do it when you've got to go quarantine for 14 you days. you got to come back, and what do you do? Like, you go there for a couple of days, and then you have to come back to America, and it's you have to then come and race next week. It's, it's a... It's not ideal, but the good thing is, is like, we're chilling, we're cool, it's no big deal. You know, I always say is you can't climb to the top with a backpack on. 
and so we're both pretty independent as far as that goes she's you know doing her career i'm doing mine and we're gonna hopefully by the end of the year intersect and she's gonna move back over into america so it, it helps in one way is i can be full focused she can be full focused and then we can you know we have the plan and that's all good but yeah it's all good for right now you're very serious about your off-track training oh yeah definitely uh I do, it's not, everybody knows I do a lot of bicycling. You shave your legs? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. How do you shave your legs? With I, the, I'm not, I mean like, like with that, I don't with know. With the Aries razor. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, is there a certain way? Like, yeah, yeah, so. Do you use, do you use girl? I don't no. look at your shi shiny legs. Well, no, you don't need to look at them. Do you? I'm just gonna show you, like <laughs> you can do this, it's called speed shaving. You can literally just go up and down. It's pretty, pretty quick. It's, do it's, you use like, do you, is there body wash? Is there, oh really? Yeah, no, oh, I don't like go any full kind of in, you know. No, dude, come on. Man, I don't even shave my face, dude. Do you, do you get manicures? No, come on. Oh. Well, come on, you shave your legs. Come on. Yeah, it's aerodynamic like, gains. Really? No, not Maybe really. I'd in bicycling, not here. I don't ride a bicycle, so if I shave my legs, that'd be a little bit. Dude, at, listen, all right, Phil Mickelson's all about calves. Look at them calves. That's yeah, how you drop guys. bombs on the golf course by those guys right there. Okay. That's I'll me. That. So if I shave my legs, I'll drop bombs if on the you golf course. Speaking of drops, you just dropped oh. your apparel company. That's a good segue. That's huge. I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> uh, let's talk about. People give you so much shit, you know, on the internet, and it's like you haven't been around the game for they a long do? time. No. No, I know, I know. I, don't, <laughs> I can't stop that. But you know what? <laughs> I'm used to it. Believe me, I've I've been getting a hard time on the internet way before there was an internet. Then they used to just tell it to my face, so it feels doesn't feel as bad. I like it. Let's talk a little bit about defy all odds. Defy odds. Let's not talk about defy all. Let's talk about defy odds. This is what we're doing this year. Okay. We defy all odds. So essentially, is is my buddy Corey Alexander, uh, you know, bought this company from actually Corey Texter who started it. A long time ago and uh, it's called Defile Odds you know great name really cool and it kind of is you know it's really kind of hones into the dirt track world because it seems like everybody's defying all odds like it's not a, a there's not this isn't a series where you know as an amateur you have factory rigs and you're doing this it's not like motocross or supercross or stuff like that so you know you always a lot of people are starting a van and stuff like that so and we want to reach out to everybody you know who's just anyone who's defying all odds you know trying to get that job you know or you know trying to run a marathon or it doesn't have to be anything sports related just if you're out there grinding and all that that's kind of what we're here for is we want to be motivation and inspiration to anybody who's trying to defy all odds and uh, we just launched we came back we just launched our new drop it's our summer drop um, it's just out now defyallodds.co it's awesome. We've got a ton of amazing t-shirts and we've kind of on this new wave where we're all about our name and we're just changing the look of our name to file odds instead of trying to go crazy with, uh, you know, different logos and this. We want to stick to the name and grow the brand right around that. And yeah, man, it's our first drop in uh, over a year. And I got involved with Corey. He wanted me to come on board and try to help out and kind of use, you know, you know, how, help uh, wrangling some people and get some people using it and on it. And, uh, you know, I'm just stoked to say that it's out there now. It's live. You can go to fileodds.co. Uh, .co, not .com. It's .co. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't get .com, so it's we're defiling all odds, too. See that? <laughs> how rebel are they? They don't even have an M. That's how, that's how rebel they are but that's pretty cool good luck with the company good Thank luck you. with the rest of the season and we're hanging out with james Rispoli. i'm so i'm so jealous ricky rackman gets to hang out with all the cool kids i'm up here in the in the booth so uh ricky's got a new segment we like what he's got going on down there between two turns we got a lot happening out here tonight we are just about get setting for opening ceremonies coming up at 6 20 to 6 30 we'll get on the racetrack right after that earlier today kristen beat caught up with last night's winner henry wiles let's Take a listen. Welcome back. I'm Kristen Beat with the American Flat Track Series, standing by with Henry Wiles of the Turner Racing Honda team. Henry, uh, one of the most polarizing personalities in the American Flat Track paddock. Um, you know, when I think about Henry Wiles, I think about him being the king of Peoria. But as you proved in years past, you can also be proficient on the miles this weekend. We're at the OKC Mile. Um, what are your kind of takeaways from having raced here previously? Um, I really like this track. I've got a couple podium finishes here, so I'm really looking forward to coming here and racing. 
Um, I was thinking about it a little bit this week, and it's going to be interesting because it seems like this track is real long, and it, and it takes forever to get from one corner to the next. And being as I'm riding a Honda 450 now, I think it's going to take a little bit longer, you know, versus the twins we used to ride. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I think the racing is going to be really good. This track develops a little bit to, you know, where the the cushion is either going to come or it's not going to come so it's going to be interesting to see how the track develops as well what would you like to see it or in which direction would you like to see it develop i know this track can be a drafting track it can be like a traditional cushion where you guys are just full send mm. uh, how would you like to see it shape up uh well i'd like to see multiple racing lines just mm. because i think that offers the best racing for the fans sure. and you know it, it might get to where it's kind of slicked off and rough on the bottom and then you got a little traction and a little bit of cushion up a little higher that i think would be the ultimate uh race for everybody but um do you have fun racing here yes yeah yeah this and it's also like you said with the the drafting on the straightaways because this track is a horse track it's not packed in quite as much mm -hmm. as a clay mm -hmm. track so the drafting sometimes isn't as prominent because when you go to pull out mm -hmm. on another rider you might start getting wheel spin and you kind of lose that drive that you mm -hmm. had to go by Speaking of losing a drive, no pun intended, <laughs> um, I mean, let's think back. 2020, you entered the singles class, a lot of hype. Everyone said he's the guy who's going to win the championship. Not that you were stepping out of the, uh, of, the, of the twins class, but that you were moving into a singles class where people expected you to be dominant. And finishing third overall in the season standings, it's not bad. So many people <laughs> would celebrate a third overall in the season standings, but how, was it satisfactory to you? Uh, well, 2020 was for sure an interesting year. It was a weird year for a lot of people, including myself. Um, you know, I, I play some different roles now uh, as being kind of a family man and a racer. So there's that balancing act. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty focused on working, actually. I was able to do a lot of work last year, not with the racing. And I was... Mm -hmm you know making a little bit of money and that uh you gotta so, taste what home life feels like yeah it yeah. was it was crazy it was the first time since i've been you know maybe a freshman or sophomore in high school mm -hmm. that i wasn't gone racing all summer you so. know what's funny is i actually remember a conversation we had last year during covid and you were like i don't know I, I don't know about coming back i've enjoyed being home with my family i've been making good i've been making great money and like for you what what brought you back I love this. Yeah. I mean, I love this. I'm competitive. I feel, you know, physically I can still come out here and win. As a 37-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> I am I am getting up there in age. I have <laughs> uh, stopped lying about it because if I beat you now, it's embarrassing. I'm old. You're young. Yeah. You know how it goes. Dad's but. putting in the work. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's definitely interesting going to the 450 class, and when we don't get the results that we feel we should, it is a little bit frustrating for me. But I also have to remember that, you know, it's not always. I don't even. I can't even hardly get these words out yeah, of my right mouth. Now but it's not always about the results i mean it is yeah. but it's it's you know because i always look at the bottom line yeah. are you winning are you not are you mm -hmm. are you making money are you not you know so it's is it worth your time and your effort and that's where it gets to be but yeah. um yeah it's 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 a definitely i try not to think about it too much i try to just stay focused on the race so at what hand helps and you get back on track what will get you back in the mix especially here at the okc mile well, you spun laps here before you know the track. I, I think that uh, Brian Bigelow's brought us some real fast Honda 450s, and I think, you know, that is going to help. Mm -hmm. it's, it is going to involve a little bit of setup, but it's a very big track. So I think, you know, with these long straightaways, it's definitely going to take some horsepower to get the job done. Does I you know you and I have mentioned that moving down to the singles class you had a, you were thinking of dropping a little weight you used to wrestle did you drop any weight for this mile or did you try to uh yeah well I was definitely training it's yeah. been hot so I have mm -hmm. I have lost a little bit of weight how uh, much is a little bit of weight like what would you uh, equate that near to? nearly ten pounds ten pounds near not quite okay so he's lying about his weight now seven, too, not just his age seven ish 
six to seven. Okay. Now, you mentioned it also being. I've been hot pounding here. a lot of water though, so I mean, I'm, I'm replenishing the it. Water weight back uh, on. <laughs> I mean, this weekend it's going to be hot. What is the game plan? And as we know from yesterday, I mean, it takes a toll on guys. Yeah, and the other thing we can't really uh, forget about that's going to play a big role in this uh, weekend's racing is this is a double header yeah. race on a track that is abrasive, a lot of material, getting physically on the demanding. Bikes. Yeah, so in in this weather, yeah, there's a lot of things. Not only we're not only going to have to manage our bodies, but mm -hmm. we're going to have to manage the bikes as well. Are there any veteran tricks to doing that? Like, are you a Pedialyte guy? Do you do the IVs? What helps? Ah, uh, you know, I just basically drink water. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. mentioned about the wrestling. Um, mm -hmm. I feel as though I'm somewhat like a camel. I don't really yeah. get dehydrated. My body doesn't really shut down. So mm -hmm. um, I feel pretty good when it's hot because yeah. I know other people are going to struggle with that more than I am going to. But you and I have talked a little bit before. Let's shift gears. Let's talk analyst mode. I, I want to get your insight on a few of the other riders in this series. Looking at the singles class, as a writer in it still, what can you kind of tell me about the personalities in this class? Uh, well, you know, there's definitely some personalities and there's definitely some great racers. You know, mm -hmm. the, it's like, you know, Dallas, he's young, but he's been training to be who he is mm -hmm. right now uh, for years. Yeah. So um, I've, I've known him since he's been a little kid, watched him race, always thought he's a great racer. But, you know, with my experience, I've seen a lot of those guys. Yeah. And sometimes they just don't always get to the level that he's at. Mm -hmm. But he's there. So, you know, he's he's one of the toughest competitors out out there, even right. though he's a young racer. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think the competition is more competitive in the singles class than maybe the Super Twins right now or the Production Twins class? How would you kind of rank them? Because I think for some reason people have a stigma about the singles class being an entry class into the series, uh -huh. but sometimes when you watch the racing, I mean, man, guys are battling for 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and it's tough battles. Yes, this is, uh, the 450 class is definitely the most competitive class out there. Yeah. Be because the, the, the bikes are close mm -hmm. to being similar, where I think maybe sometimes with the Twins, and building different frames and, and you know you can there's a lot of different variables so with the 450s there's not those yeah. variables you know it's it's the little variances between brand to brand mm -hmm. and then after that it's just how strong is your team how strong mm -hmm. is your bike how strong are you the day of that race and what are you showing up as you mentioned it earlier but being a dad that's changed things how has it changed you as a rider uh I don't know if it's changed me as a rider. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely the things that you have to take into consideration. You know, like what what are you bringing home? Yeah. You know, are you bringing home the, the, the big game away? or yeah. the little game? <laughs> and is the time away worth? Yeah. Yeah, and and there's that too. You know, it's like I feel that my kids are probably going to get older before I am, so I, I don't know how long necessarily mm -hmm. to let that go i don't want to be the guy that is uh gone racing still tra chasing my dreams and missing all the soccer games and you know all the baseball games and, and not being there for my kids and and helping them to right get them along in their dreams so I'm I think it's so cool. Your kids were at Joliet as well. You have a beautiful wife. You have beautiful kids. Um, for, for them to be able to kind of be behind you, how special is that? How cool oh, is that? It is awesome. It's a you know literally a dream come true. Yeah. So I uh, I'm very happy that they're able to attend the races, and I love it when they come. And it it actually gives me more incentive to I love it. to ride a little harder, make Family sure Man I Henry. cross the T's, dot the I's, and get the job done. Well, That's what I want to want them to see. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be able to see you get the job done here in OKC. We're gonna toss it to commercial break, but guys, we'll be back again. Henry Wells on the Turner Racing Honda. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, homie. Thank you. I appreciate it. That was awesome hearing from last night's winner, Henry Wiles. He's also our quick qualifier here today at the OKC mile number two. That was great to hear from him on the Turner Racing Honda. He's got help from American Honda. Now let's go down to Ricky Rackman. He was talking to the, he went down and checked out the t-shirt booth earlier. Let's see what he found out. When you're here at the American Flat Track Race, you got to check out the merchandise booth. And right now we've got all sorts of cool stuff 
including these event shirts right here. And if you can't make it to the race, you can find all these shirts and some prior event shirts at AmericanFlatTrack.com. And this is the new shirt that everybody's talking about. Look at this. Right there. Anyone but me. You know what? I'm not even going to say anything about that shirt. I'm just, I'm just going to... It's just wrong? You wouldn't buy the Anyone But Me shirt? No, I wouldn't. Because I have two good shirts. No, oh. <laughs> Anyone but me except for a Jared Meese fan. And just so you know, I'll be honest with you, there's more Jared Meese shirt selling than anyone but me. So there's a big Jared Meese fan group here in the OKC. I love it. Anyone but Meese. Meese was undefeated here at this racetrack. Now they got the shirt that says anyone but Meese. That's for the people that don't like Meese winning. So stop by and grab one. They've also got the They've also got the uh, OKC Mile shirts on sale. Ricky Rackman had the burgundy one on earlier today. Still has it on, actually. They got a black version down there. That's right down there. The AFT, American Flat Tracker Clothing Company booth, is underneath in the air conditioning. If you're a little bit warm down there, stop by and check out the booth. Right next door is our friends with Law Tigers, the Rookie Class of 79. We're going to take a commercial break. A commercial break. We're coming back at 620 with opening ceremonies right here. The darkness is full of demons, hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows, prowling under the cloak of dusk. But we're not demons. We're beasts. Hey, is that your stomach growling? Or the sound of thousands of cc's circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines, because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty. Motion Pro. We make innovative tools and products that help you maintain and repair motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. Like the patented Profil Air Chuck, helping you manage tire air pressure on your motorcycle, ATV, or UTV. Easily adjust the Profil Air Chuck. Get past hot disc brake rotors with the pivoting angled head. Connect it with an airline. Or pair it with a Motion Pro digital tire pressure gauge. Reach for the Profil Air Chuck to manage your tires. Get yours at MotionPro.com or visit Power Sports stores nationwide. Live rangerously. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street legal version of the aggressive DT3 Flat Track tire. With the K180, street riders can now have the authentic Flat Track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. Explore the full Indian motorcycle lineup, including the all-new redesigned FTR with 17-inch wheels and street-tuned suspension, or the new generation of a classic, the 2022 Indian Chief. For more info and to schedule a demo ride, visit IndianMotorcycle.com. Always wear a helmet, never drink and ride. Kicker Performance Audio is the official sound system of American Flat Track. Kicker's fully stocked line of products includes speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers for your car and truck stereo systems, as well as those for your boat, side-by-side, -side, and touring motorcycle. Kicker also makes Bluetooth outdoor speakers, over-ear headphones, and earbuds to pair with your favorite mobile device. To learn more or find a dealer, visit kicker.com. 
Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at klotzlube.com. KTM, ready to race. Awry Helmet started racing in America in flat track, and we've been supporting it ever since. Awry, handcrafted with an obsessive dedication to rider protection. For more information, please visit our website, awryamericas.com. Cardo Systems is the official Bluetooth communicator for American flat track. Whether on the road or at the track, the Cardo Systems industry-leading mesh technology keeps you and your fellow riders connected. Racers like Sammy Halbert rely on Cardo for street riding entertainment as well as a training tool at the track. All Cardo communicators are fully waterproof, dirt-proof, and feature sound by JBL. For more information, check out cardosystems.com and follow Cardo on all social media platforms at at Cardo Systems. You own the job and everything that comes with it. The mornings that start too early, the nights that go too late, and every unbelievable thing in between. It's good to know you can rent whatever construction equipment you need from people who do whatever it takes. Visit us at catrentalstore.com. Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of Progressive American Flat Track. For decades, Progressive American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic Gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. Drag Specialties welcomes race fans. At Drag Specialties, our commitment to riding is a way of life. That's why we want to remind you that when you're ready to tackle maintenance or add performance and style to your ride, make your first stop a local dealer who stocks products from Drag Specialties. Drag Specialties. Enjoy the races. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Indian Motorcycle of Oklahoma City, OKC Mile, presented by Kicker Performance Audio. I'm Scotty Dubler. I'm at my home track, my home state. Welcome to Oklahoma City. Happy Father's Day to one and all. Happy Father's Day to my dad. He's downstairs. My grandpa's down there. The whole family's here. And now let's go trackside with the man, the myth, the legend, the coolest cat in town ricky rackman i had absolutely no idea that you were just talking about me scotty dubler but thank you let's give it up for oklahoma boy scotty dubler way way up there they're cheering for you scotty i'm in such a good mood i am so excited tonight it is round six of progressive american flat track and this is the indian motorcycle of oklahoma city okc mile presented by kicker race fans have filled the stands here and for all of you watching us live right now on facebook live and on nbc track pass so good to see all of you and now ladies and gentlemen please rise 
and remove your hats for the invocation from MRO Chaplain Raymond Rizzo. Thank you, Ricky. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity to stand once again before you and say thank you for our many blessings, seen and unseen. What an amazing God you are. And we just want to say thank you again. As an incredible uh, father, these, we're going to honor our fathers this weekend. We ask a special blessing on each and every one. Not only that, we ask for our riders, incredibly talented riders. I pray you keep them safe from all harm as they navigate this course. I pray their, their crew members, their, their sponsors, their families, everyone that's helping them, you would bless them as well. Give them wisdom in everything that's needed, as well as our AFT series. I pray every uh, blessing on all of our staff and leadership, those that are working around this track and those that are working outside of it. All behind the scenes, ask your blessings. And we're so grateful again for all of our fans here. We're so grateful for each and every one that has this opportunity to watch us. And I pray that they will be blessed tonight. And I also thank you once more for all those that are around the world serving for our freedom. Bless and encourage them. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Raymond Rizzo. Real quick, I got to say thank you to the people at the Indian Motorcycle Riders Group and Dirty Nick and Chandra. They're from Oklahoma, and this morning they hooked me up with a ride. I got to ride all around your great state, and uh, the riders here, I've done a lot of charity motorcycle rides, and whenever I come to Oklahoma City, it's one of my favorite cities to ride through because the riders groups here and all the bikers that are out here are so cool, and I always have a good time, and I mean that. And right now, I'd like to welcome Scott Conway from Indian Motorcycles of Oklahoma City. How are you, Scott? I'm doing great, Ricky. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you for being the uh, title sponsor of this event. And I know that you also are a sponsor of, uh, of Bronson, and you have been a big part of flat track racing for a long time. Uh, you know, I always enjoyed the sport. You know, even before I was a motorcycle dealer, I'd, I'd always go to the races, you know, Springfield when I lived up north. So, um, yeah, everybody cheer for Bronson tonight. And if you want to come check out, they do some really cool custom motorcycles because I have been to their dealership several times. Where is your dealership located? Our, our dealership's downtown Oklahoma City in Automobile Alley, uh, 10th Street. And I can just tell you, because I've ridden a motor, an Indian motorcycle coast to coast 12 times, and they're really great motorcycles. So thank you very much for being a big part of this event. Yep. Now I'd like to welcome somebody that loves it loud. Please give it up for Kevin Campbell from Kicker. Kicker is a big part of uh, this event and a lot of the flat track events. And tell us some of the cool stuff Kicker does, because uh, it's all about rock and roll for me, and I appreciate what Kicker does. Oh, exactly. It, uh, first of all, thanks, Ricky. Thanks for having me, and, and it's an honor to be involved with, with uh, Indian of Oklahoma City to, to help bring this great event to you guys. Looks like everybody's out here to have a great time tonight, and we are Kicker. We are living loud. And if there's a sport that fits our identity better than this, I don't know what it is. Um, you know, for us, living loud isn't about just turning it up all the way, which we do. We, we turn it up all the way. But it, it's about pushing the limits of what you can achieve and what you can do, uh, whether you're on a bike, whatever it is you're doing in life. That's what we're all about is push, do everything you can to, to exceed and, and succeed. And, um, you know, so while you're here, especially in the shade, enjoy yourselves. This racing is going to be amazing. Please stop by and see us in our booth. We've got some fun toys for you to look at. Lots of great side-by-sides and cool stuff like that. But uh, we're, we're in our 48th year. I know I look older, Ricky, but, you know, we're in our 48th year here at, at uh, Kicker in Stillwater. Yeah, you're an Oklahoma company. Yes, we are. We are born and raised Oklahoma company, although we sell worldwide now. We are right down the road in Stillwater. You, should, you guys should come see us. Not tonight. But come see us. So, anyway. All right. Give it up for Kevin Campbell from Kicker. Now, let's take a look at some of last night's action. Another hole shot by the 65 of Corey Texter. Yeah, no surprise there. No dirt on that motorcycle because nobody's been in front of him all night. Uh -huh. Not yet, at least. Kevin Smith is looking strong. Yes, and uh, Barnes has a mechanical. Right on this, and Barnes has a mechanical. Hand goes up. Probably just trying to hold his line. 
Man, that is too close for comfort. Taking the Oklahoma City Mile win, his third of the season. It's Corey Texter, number 65, right there. Clutches are out, light is green. From the inside, it's wild. Nestler up to third. The high-low move, can he make it stick? He does. Wild is long gone by about a full straightaway. Number 17, the hammer. Winning in Oklahoma City, the double checker flies up. He's whipping it like a horse. Green light clutches are coming out. Look at Breyer grabbing the whole shot. Back out in front of the 44. Brand Robinson here comes Breyer looking for his 10th career victory in the Super Twins class. Double checker flies for the 44. Robinson, your winner. And now let's meet the top five. One, and now let's two, meet the top three, five go. in the point settings. The Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycles. Currently in the fifth place in the point settings. He comes to us from Bill Pot, Kentucky. Round number three winner. He's riding for Estenson Racing, Yamaha Racing, and Monster Energy. Number 95, J.D. Beach. Fourth place in the point settings from Mount Gilead, Ohio. Riding for Mission Foods, Root Systems of Dallas, Texas. He finished fourth here last night. Number 20, Captain Chaos, Jared Vandercoy. Third place in the point settings from Sebastian, Florida. Round number two winner. He rides for Indian Motorcycle, Progressive Insurance, Rogers Racing, SDI Racing. The number nine is on the number plate. Former series champion. They call him the jammer. Number nine, Jared Mees. Second place in the point settings was fifth last night. Second now. He won last night. He's doing it for Mission Foods, Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas. The 44 is on the number plate from Oxford, Pennsylvania. Brendan Robinson. Last but not least is your two-time defending champion, round number four winner. He rides for Indian Motorcycle Progressive Insurance, SNS Cycle from Salinas, California, the number one rider in the nation, Briar Bauman. Those are your top five riders. Let's go back to the victory podium and my friend, Ricky Rackman. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for our national anthem from Nick Stark from the band Chasing Neon. Please join me. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire or the ramparts we washed were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave from the band chasing neon let's give it up for nick stark i can feel it I feel like something special is going to happen tonight. I hope you people can feel it too. I've been telling you people online for some time now, wait till we get to OKC. The fans there, they're louder, they're prouder, and tonight is going to be something special. I know this microphone works, but I just want to make sure one more time. We are out, people. We are happy. We are healthy. We are going to see some incredible racing tonight. Are you with me, OKC?
I could hear you. I know you were loud, but I know we can do better. Are you with me? OKC. That's what I like to hear. It's round six of Progressive American Flat Track Racing. I am so happy to be here. And now, back to you, Scotty. That's the main man right there, Ricky Rackman. I'm up here in the booth. Joining me in the booth, former series champion. Welcome to the booth, the Bullet Brad Baker. Don't forget, it's time to switch on over to Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold right now. If you're watching at home, switch on over to Track Pass. Brad, welcome back to the booth. It's day number two of the OKC Mile. I'm really excited, Scotty. The racetrack was uh, was treacherous last night, but, man, did it make for a show for us. I mean, these guys had their hands full. It was hot out right now. Uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely been interesting, but I love watching this track. It was one of my favorites to come to. Uh, it's looking better here today. Riders are good, got good feedback. Uh, yeah, it's